This is Philip Roy playing the Doctor. And I'm Mandy Rose and I play Jenny. For the Doctor Who fan film, Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion, this is the Type 40 podcast. Yes, it's time for Type 40 Live materialising right here again with the live stream Doctor Who magazine show across your view screen in real time on YouTube, Rumble and Facebook, always in front of a live chat full of friends, fans and companions just like you. Okay. That's that out of the way. <laughs> yes, Doctor Who Talk is what we do here across the length and breadth of the ever-evolving universe doing our best to keep track of every ripple and every wave. In fact, I think they've dropped some new key art just before we're about to come online. We'll get to that in due course. I'm sure we will. We're returning from our short Easter break to catch up with you there in the live chat and one another as we, we spill the tea. Spill the beans. Take the pee. <laughs> no doubt, as always, whichever comes first, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yes. <clears throat> As I was saying, I'm Dan Hadley, Birmingham's king of the geeks. That was a high one, wasn't it? And whoever you are, we'll find out in a moment or two. Whether you're watching, wherever it is you're watching, don't forget Facebook users. If you're over there in the Type 40 Facebook group, you've got to hit the blue link. And then Facebook tells StreamYard who you are. StreamYard will tell us we all get on first name terms. I already am with most of them in the live chat. And I certainly am with the people I'm about to bring on right now. Hmm. Okay, so yes, uh, 61 years of Doctor Who, 15 incarnations now, and we're on the threshold, aren't we, of, of new TV Who. I wonder, can we smell the excitement as I bring, <laughs> as I bring on my good friend, Mr. Simon Horton? <laughs> oh, I like the way you, you mention me as soon as you talk about smell. I mean, that's really nice. Thank you for that, Dan. <laughs> Lovely. Good evening. Hello like everybody, it. wonderful to be back with you. How long have we been off air? Is it only a couple of weeks? Is that two weeks, is it? A, it is only a couple of weeks, believe it or not. A couple of weeks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to be back anyway. Woohoo! Bring it on. All good. <laughs> yeah, we've got a, a fair amount to talk about, more than, more than one would think. It has gone a little bit sleepy, but we can always find lots to stick our noses into, can't we? Because I think that's what Doctor Who fans do best, don't we? We're always able to find something to... to Throw out on the table and to pick our <laughs> pick our way through. Yes, we've got we've got some. Uh, oh well, yes, we've got. Yes, they're all here. I'm happy to say. Okay, so yes, uh, after that lead in, uh, we have a. Oh, that's the signal, is it? <laughs> was that you telling me what to do? Yes, so I'm happy to say that somebody who always gives the show and me personally a bit of a lift. <laughs> yes, she's back after uh, a couple of months break. Looking fabulous as ever, it's the rambling and the geeky. The geeky rambler, it's Shaw. Hi, I know. Hello. Bit of, oh a, uh, bit of a hiatus, but I'm glad to be back. Hello. Hi, Simon. How are you? Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lovely welcome. You're bringing, you're bringing the glamour to the channel, aren't you? Let's be honest. Oh, no, oh. I'm doing my best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's my fan when I need it? <laughs> well, Dan's already had comments about his excellent hair. I feel sure you're going to get comments about your excellent hair, Shah. <laughs> I know. Shame it's not real, isn't it? Really, but um, we 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 move. 
Oh, yes. Don't get no one knows that. Nobody knows. knows. Cut, no cut that out <laughs> of the edit, Dan, before it goes out. Yeah, good job it's not live, isn't it? <laughs> don't ruin the magic. Yes, Sorry. We're, we're already making uh, exhibitions of ourselves here, and that's uh-huh. a little bit of a theme with what we're, what we're doing <laughs> later on in the show. But this TARDIS console room, Simon, it looks familiar, but it doesn't. It looks like, I think I know what everything does, but I don't. I can't qu- <laughs> quite work out where I've seen this before. I expect all the pieces will fall into place later on. But there's bars all the way around it and signs saying, please do not touch. That could be an indicator, couldn't it, about where we, where we might be going later on? Could well be, but we wouldn't want to spill the beans, would we? No. <laughs> I'm excited already. I, I always say when Dan would say, do you want to come on? I say, yeah, but don't tell me what we're going to talk about. I don't want to know. <laughs> Usually it's the worst decision, but I always been looking forward to it. So. It always works yeah. out well in the end. Oh. Always works out well in the end, of course. <laughs> well, you, you are in good company and safe hands. I, I promise, uh, because we have we've got somebody else to bring on. Yes, we're joined with a friend of the show, Life... A friend? A friend with the show? <laughs> we're joined by a friend of the show, lifelong Doctor Who fan and writer of the hit audio original book, The Resurrection Plant. It's always a pleasure to introduce Woo! or reintroduce Mr. Will Hadcroft back on the show. Hey, Yay. we're not worthy. We're not worthy. I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> I don't have any impressive hair at all, I'm afraid. You, need, you needed a wig like the rest of us, Will. Yeah, yeah. I'll borrow Shaz when she's finished with it. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm not sure where we'll attach it, but <laughs> we'll find <Yeah>. something. <laughs> Some recycling going on. Yeah. Good to see you, Will. Yeah, you too. Hang on. And now I can see you. Oh, yeah. lovely. We're in HD um, now, are we? <laughs> it would be, it would be good of me to actually speak on this one as well. The last time I did a live one, because I'd never yes. been on live before, Yes, I was just watching the show as I normally would. It took me about a half an hour to say anything. So you, you forgot to open your mouth, did you, Will? <laughs> so this time I'm speaking, folks. So you can the comment section. <laughs> I bet everybody could hear him. Yes, we've got a lot to talk about in a, a sort of a free and easy way with our friends in the live chat. We will be making exhibitions of ourselves later on. Not like this. No, you're quite safe with us. It's not going that far. But we That's are on the looking... OnlyFans, guys. Yeah, <laughs> look out. <laughs> but we are looking across at what has been trending because it was quite a quiet Easter holiday in the Hooniverse, I'd say, but things are moving up a gear now, I do feel, because it is just under a month as we are speaking until the, uh, the the travels in time and space of the Time Lord and his companion, they resume, don't they? The Doctor and Ruby back on screen for the first full season of all new Doctor Who. Episodes will premiere the whole world over, sort of. <laughs> I think we're still smarting a little bit from that. But obviously the campaign has stepped up considerably with uh, iPlayer and Disney Plus all over this. So we've got posters, we've got trailers, we've got titles and dates. Uh, guest stars are being confirmed all the time. So, so much, so much happening. It's when things have been quiet for a while, Shah, and then we get this sort of flow. Does, mm. Is it hard to get back into gear with it for you? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's It takes a little while only because I'm so... I don't know if it's oh, a terrible thing to say because I'm so used to just not hearing anything, you yeah. know. So I'm kind of just I go with the flow, and then something will pop up, and I go, "Oh right, okay." And it will take me something really magical to get excited, and then I'll be yeah, then I'll be ready for it. Usually, it's about two weeks before I think they start, you know, really ramping it up. Um, yeah. But yeah, it takes me a while to be like, "Oh yeah, I can't wait to sit down and watch this," because I just haven't felt like that for a little while. Um, so. But it's been fine because I've been substituting it with classic, and I am now almost through Pertwee. Although, if uh, oh, anyone's in the yeah, if I've actually spoke to anyone that may be in the chat about this, then I'll, they'll let you know very quickly that I've completely skipped two series by complete accident. So I'm trying to race through that still. Other um, than that, yeah. it's going really well, yeah. Other than that, it's going fantastic. I've just finished Carnival of Monsters. Okay, so, go on. What do you think of Carnival of Monsters? <laughs> um. It- <laughs> It's it's fine. It's it's good. It's fun. Um, cheesy, cheesy. Yeah, oh, but that's nice. That that's the camp doctor that I absolutely adore. Yeah, of course. Um, not my favourite so far, but it's fine. It doesn't it doesn't need to be. I'm just happy to experience it all. Yeah. 
they don't all need to be your favourites, do they, Will? To latch onto something about each story or, or episode. Yeah. I think that's the Doctor Who fans' way for the most part, isn't it? To to find something we like we like about most chunks of Doctor Who. Yeah. Most most of it um or maybe even all of it. Uh, there, there are bits, even in the, the least popular stories, are the ones that are least popular with you. Uh, there's usually something to like about them. It, it's just the escapism, isn't it? I mean, if you don't like the actor, the actors in it, or, or maybe the storyline of a particular one, there's always something to, to keep you tuning in. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, I think Carnival of Monsters is far from my favourite, but you're right, Will, there's always something in there to enjoy. And, and for me, it's the location footage in Carnival of Monsters. I think those scenes in the marshes are brilliant. And the yeah. cliffhanger is at the end of episode two when you first see the drashing and it just comes up and you just see... It turns around. Yeah, he's, it turns around and John Pertwee is just framed quite low and he just mm. he's not doing... He's just standing there looking shit scared, basically. Mm. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful cliffhanger. So you're right, Will. Even in the worst stories, apart from maybe the Twin Dilemma, there's always something <laughs> that you can find to latch on to to enjoy. See, I, I love the Twin Dilemma, but may, maybe that's my maybe that's my problem. Yeah, but you love Nightmare like Reason as well. Yeah, we've, we've all got one. I don't I, like the time monster. It's cool, like it's fine. <laughs> I don't, I don't find it unwatchable. The Twin Dilemma, as some do. Um, and even some of the stuff where, where Colin is really going for it with his uh, his um, sort of bipolar mm -hmm. regeneration, um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I hark back to when I was 14. I was 13 and three quarters, actually, when that first went out. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very taken with him uh, uh, having those fits, uh, mm -hmm. as Perry called them. And, and the, that, that scene where he strangles Perry, which, which is... Um, very uh, provocative and controversial, and a lot of people really hate it. Even I, now, Will, that's seen as very, yeah, as yeah, very controversial. They, yeah. That's always a, the bit that's flagged up, isn't it, when it's discussed. Yeah. I, uh, at 13 and three quarters, um, I, I didn't want him to stay like that, but I was fascinated that the regeneration had really scrambled him up, and uh, he was resorting to that kind of behaviour. So I, I I've never had a problem with that, and and I and still don't, and I um, I've met people uh, who have had they've had kind of behavioural issues in their own lives when they were young. I met a lady in Morecambe at a comic con or somewhere, and Colin was at his table, and she she uh, is on the autism spectrum, and she had pretty bad behavioural problems in her teens. And she approached Colin, and I wasn't that far away from the table. And he called me over. Will, Will, listen to this, listen to this. Uh, because he knew I'd, I'd had uh, problems with autism and Asperger's. Uh, and she told him that the scene where he, he throttles Perry and then she holds the mirror up to his face so he can see himself. And then he, he recoils, doesn't he, and grabs yeah, all yeah, the console yeah. and whimpers at the console. She she uh, actually identified with that very closely as a young girl because she would have these bipolar episodes herself, extremely manic, and, and would be quite unpleasant to people. And then in the aftermath, really hate herself for what she'd mm -hmm. said and done. Yeah. So she actually drew comfort from, from witnessing that scene. So... so it, there really is something in every Doctor Who. There's something. There really is, isn't there? It lands differently for different people, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's one of the reasons why I think it still survived all these years because it is. It, it just really does speak to so many different people on so many different levels. I can see why Colin would have found that moving. Forty years ago, as well, that story was was broadcast. The, the dawn of a new era. Here we are, mm. all over again. And and yeah, we've had just like when we got the Twin Dilemma back in '84. We've already had sort of one chunk. Already, we haven't had quite the weight we had in between the Twin Dilemma and Attack of the Cybermen before what's going to come next. But uh, there mm. has been a, a lull. I do wonder what the general public are going to make of it. But things are resuming. And we've, we've recently, we've had this this very, very week. Oh, okay. Missed that. I hadn't seen that one. <laughs> a wink. <laughs> Just a wink is all we need. Is a wink really all we need after five months, Shah? Is that, will that suffice? Depends on who's winking at me. Um, but, uh -huh. you know, but 
Um, sure. I, I, I no, <laughs> there I'm talking absolute rubbish. No, I, I, I love little teasers and I love these little things that they do when I've had mm. a full blown. I don't know what you'd what you'd call it. I just if if I've got everything I need, I've had all the trailers out and it's being plugged to death. I love it. And then yeah, give me a little bits of that in between. I don't know whatever you watch on BBC. I don't really watch it. And then uh, yeah, I'll lap it up all day long. But I just think okay, I don't I don't have, I don't feel anything. Isn't that terrible after all this time? Well, there's a move. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. This there seems to be a move towards kind of really momentary marketing what they what some uh, an old sci-fi show used to call a blipvert it's almost subliminal and mm. obviously this is the way that they market a lot of product don't they and content but i think that doctor who and, and storytelling sort of should be sort of should be more than that i mean yeah i i, I kind of feel i i sort of agree with you dan just just having a wink it, i don't know in a way it just feels a bit smug it feels a bit self-satisfied it feels a bit overly confident we don't have to try too hard because it's doctor who and you're going to watch it anyway so we're just going to be a bit clever clever and just wink at the camera in a knowing sort of way that says it, it, it's going it's that sort of um in a way, we're kind of back to hyperbole, aren't we? Again, where whatever we throw at you, it's going to be the best thing you've ever seen ever. It's the best doctor you'll ever have seen. I don't know. It just wears a bit thin to me. Uh, they, I, sorry, go on. No, go on. Shut, carry on, Sha. I'm That's done. Was, no, <laughs> no, it's more just that this, is, but this isn't the first. What I'm trying to sort of get in my head, I don't know if it's just because I've got older, but I don't think that's right. I don't think that's the reason. But they this isn't the first time they've done that sort of marketing. This isn't no. the first time we've had anything like that. So I just I'm trying to decipher what's different and I genuinely can't put my finger on it. But I think it's just because when you've had so much of just meh nah the whole oh, way man. through, yeah. you're not gonna get excited because what is there to prove that it's gonna be fantastic? I'm yeah. not sure. You know, yeah, yeah so, so I, it's more that I've been trying to link the dots between when I was, I don't know, I'm gonna say fifteen and now at twenty nine. What's mm -hmm. changed? And and things that were exciting you back then, you now feel that it needs to work a bit harder mm -hmm. to convince you to be excited. Is that it? Because that's how I feel. I think I don't know if it's because it, I don't know if it's that I need convincing more. Well, no, I, I, I'm kind of agreeing with you. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is when you've had so much of look at how amazing this is going to be for the past. I'm going to say arguably about five or six years and it's yeah. really not been up to par <laughs> how are you then going to be able to like to say well this is all we need yes at one point that's probably all you did need because i was so invested in so yeah. thrilled and i was getting yeah. it left right and center now i've not had that Mm -hmm. What are you trying to tell me? I should be. I'm not going to be told how to sure. feel about something. I, I yeah? hadn't. I don't think I'd looked at it quite like that before because as the, you're quite right. As the, as the length of the series has been diminished down from 13 weeks to 12 to 10 and now to 8, then the amount of weeks in the average year that we get that are kind of pure, pure hype or nothing at all gr grossly outweighs the number of weeks where the show's actually on and so yeah you kind of feel like you're always being hyped up for whatever's co coming next and it's it's a slither rather than something sort of really really hearty uh, mm. will all the marketing mm. seems to be insisting that shooty gatwa is a major major star i i don't know i've always felt <laughs> i don't know how you how convinced you are of this you can answer that if you want to you don't have to but i've always felt that it's not really up to the media to decide who the stars are. The public should decide if somebody's a real star, or is that really yeah. naive? Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, really, uh, I want to see him. This is just me personally. Now, I, I want to yeah. see him give us the Doctor, uh, and I've got no doubt as an actor he's got it in him to do it. But it's whether he's going to be written like like that you know the doctor that as i imagine him is not what we've seen so far mm. now maybe it's just me getting a bit older and uh, jaded and maybe the young audience love him i don't know i don't know any young people who are watching it but uh may maybe he'll go down well with them but for me i've not seen the doctor yet you know and i'm hoping i will when it when it returns mm. I, the, I agree very the doctor, much. The doctor is what will sell it to me. It won't be him as an actor. Mm. 
it will be his performance as the doctor. And I've not seen anything doctory in him yet. It's all been very um, zany and off the wall and yeah. uh, talking 10 to the dozen and all of that, you know. Uh, I want to see a bit more brooding and a bit more serious. Uh, that's the serious side of him. Uh, what we call I'm the range. Sure. I the think you've got it, role. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I would agree totally with Will. As I've said before now, I don't yet see the Doctor. I think the, the problem is there is a danger for the production team to just think, just because this person travels around in a police box and we've got the theme tune there and we stick the logo at the front, that's sufficient. That makes it Doctor Who uh, and, and we don't need to try too hard beyond that. Um, and I, I, I fear that there is uh, a, a danger of sort of throwing the baby out with the bathwater with this and actually you're losing. I, I've said before now that it feels to me like it's turning into a completely different show and that's absolutely fine. If that's the show you as a production team want to make, that's fine. But I don't feel it should be hung on the Doctor Who hanger. You should you, you make yourself you 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 cut yourself your own cloth. You make your own show, um, and you launch it, and 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 it either works or it doesn't work. But to just hang something entirely different on a very well established format and expect people to take it just seems uh, arrogance to me because. I, I, I can't see why we can't still have Doctor Who like Doctor Who was. And and if you want to make a completely different show, go for it. Just just mm. make that show. As, but call it something else. Call it Travels in Time. Call it whatever you want to call it. Don't call it Doctor Who. Mm. We'll see. I, talking, about, talking about hanging things on onto Doctor Who and vice versa, I know that, Simon, you will have felt deep, deep joy at the revelation that uh, Doctor Who is to be... Uh, is to enter into a kind of partnership with with Roblox at last. What? <laughs> so, what? I know. That's exactly what I said. I know what to get you for Christmas, Simon. You don't even yeah. know what it is. <laughs> is it a biscuit? <laughs> now, I, well, I've heard of Roblox for a long They do sound like biscuits, don't they? It's like, a, uh, like a Jacob's Club. And yeah. Apparently, apparently it's, a, it's, a, it's a game. I knew it was a game of some sort. That's all I really knew. But it turns out it's not a single game. It's a collection of more than 50 million games that are all actually created what? by a community of online players, of creative people. So Roblox is actually an online game platform and game Whoa. creation system. And it was launched all the way back in 2006. So I was aware it had been around for quite a while, but I didn't know exactly what it was. And I certainly had no idea whether it was a suitable partner for, for Doctor Who as a brand. But Doctor Who is going to be part of something called BBC Wonder Chase. And you can see in front of you there, that's the 15th Doctor and Ruby as they're going to be visualized in this cuboid, in this cuboid form. This is something that doesn't interest me at all. But I do know that for something that's been going for like 18 years, as, as it says in the publicity there, that Roblox does seem to be enduring in the same way that something like Poke pokemon has and, and things like the sims did so roblox doesn't seem to be going anywhere and they continually sort of revise it and update it what's your instinct about this shark could this be something because i know loads of kids that, that play this that want to play it you know they're a little bit too young and they say to their parents can i have roblox yeah there is something about this brand isn't there do you think they, this could get the kids interested into it I am the wrong person to ask this question. I, I do. I am very aware of it. I've got friends, children, and cousins that love Roblox. Um, because there are communities based around it as well, aren't there? That develop these games. Yeah, and yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm just. I've, I've never looked at it into it myself. Um, but if this can get more people involved, I'm totally fine with that. People can enjoy this on as many channels and platforms as they want to. And um, I, I never see anything wrong with expanding media. I'm just not someone who goes out of my way to explore it. Um, but yeah, any I think any way that you can is absolutely fine by me. And if anyone thinks anything different, I've, I've just not got um, enough of an opinion, if I'm being honest. This is actually kind of how I felt about Doctor in general. <laughs> but I'm, I'm so happy for, for any of this. That's absolutely fine by me. Open up the world as much as you want to. It's great. No, I've done, I've done a little it. dig in here, and apparently the mm. chase, it's, uh, it's all a hunt 
with stickers. And it's all a, a general BBC thing. So it ties into other BBC shows and brands like the BBC Sport and Match of the Day and Hack of the Dog from CBBC. So there's lots of BBC affiliated brands and personalities that are, that are tied into this. And, and people have got to collect the stickers, I suppose, in the same way that, that uh, one would have to con collect the little characters from Pokemon Go like 10, 12 years ago. So I can sort of yeah. see where this is going. But what I wondered about, Simon, was on the on one of the last shows that we did, we talked about a bit about the uh, the Weetabix promotion from the mid-70s. Yeah, we did. For all, for all that I rolled my eyes at this, is Roblox actually kind of the same sort of promotion 40 years, 40 years on, sort of to be tied to something that is mm. part of children's everyday lives? Maybe... Maybe what goes around comes around, and it's it's the same idea, sort of reskinned. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a really good point, and I think it's a very, very fair point. The difference I would make at the moment is that Weetabix, when that was out in 76, 77, Doctor Who was bigger than it had ever been before. Mm. It was just absolutely massive. It was everywhere, and everybody wanted you know, Doctor you could Who. You put the little figures out of the cereal packets and play them on the game board. Yeah. Okay, we don't have game boards now, but they have these online platforms mm. that they can make their own games and make their own characters. You see what I mean? And I do. I totally see what you mean. But as I say, for me, the difference is that now Doctor Who is not uh, no. uh, what, what people want. This is the difficulty. My feeling is for all of these things that, that, that keep on getting released, I'm like, no, just get the show working first. Get <laughs> yeah, the yeah. public falling in love with it again. <laughs> and so then right. people will want this stuff. If you think back to sort of the David Tennant years when there were all those sort of red button um, uh, online adventures and oh, things like yeah, that. Yeah. And every week there was a different sort of website launched with a different game. And that's because there was an appetite for it. People want yeah it people don't want doctor who at the moment that's not to say when the shooty series comes out that everybody won't fall in love with it and it would be huge again and then would be the time to do something like this roblox but at the moment everybody's looking at saying how can i invest my interest in something that actually I'm not interested in at the moment just because you release a, a game of it it's not going to suddenly make you fall in love with this uh, with this version of doctor who i've got to fall in love with the doctor who ver that i'm watching on screen first and then all these things fall into place because the appetite is there that you want more i don't think people want more yet they just want a good show do you think, at the moment. Do you think okay. it is because you, okay. you look at these you look at these cuboid versions of the characters Shaw. And you think if this is a character that you've watched on screen for years and years and years, you think, oh, that's so and so. I I love Eleven from Stranger Things. Now she I can see her in this. It's kind of the same principle as they used to sell pop vinyls. So you, you watch these characters, you follow them on a show and a cartoon, or you read about them, and then you see the pop vinyl. And you think, oh, you know, and they're in that world. And because you followed them, you've invested in them. You latch onto them. But these characters are like fifty-seven minutes old. So perhaps it'll happen but in time. But this is for children, and I'm looking at yeah. it, it through that lens. Um, so because I, I, Simon, I 100 as always, to be fair, agree with you. Um, but when I'm thinking from a kid point of view, when yeah. I was little, I would have loved something like this. I would have mm -hmm. loved to have had something I would like well. and immerse myself, yeah, into something such as this, so I can really, you know, there's so many times when I wanted to sort of go away from whatever i'd watched and be like oh i just want some more so i get where you're saying about the more thing but from a kid point of view i think it's great um, mm. and ultimately this is for families so i think i don't think it's a bad idea i don't think it's the right timing but I don't yeah think that's exactly idea. why i agree totally sure mm. that's what i'm trying to say Will, yeah yeah does this make you wish you were eight years old again i was just i was just thinking um Remember the, uh, the the filmation Star Trek cartoon? Yeah. Uh, uh, when, you know, before the uh, the motion picture came along, uh, after the original show had finished, we had a gap of no nothing, really. And then these cartoons would turn up, vo voiced by the original actors, uh, very simple two-dimensional drawings. Um, and, and I absolutely loved it. I, re I remember finding it, you know, on... BBC One or whatever on a Saturday morning. Oh, it's a Star Trek cartoon. So I wasn't going, oh, goodness me, what's this rubbish? You know, I I, I loved it because yeah. it, it was Star Trek, but as a cartoon. So I'm assuming that when the shooty series goes out soon, you know, and this Roblox, Roblox thing sort of accompanies it, um, that the children who watch the Doctor Who programme 
will connect it with this Roblox thing and, and they'll love it. It's not for me, but it isn't aimed at me, is it? It's not for me. No. It's for children. <laughs> so I, I'm happy for it to exist, but it doesn't really mean anything to me. It's uh, yeah. This is probably going to excite a lot of younger Doctor Who fans out there, or at least some of the families could sort of do together mm. on their smartphones. Yeah, I got my fingers crossed that it does go somewhere. But you're quite right, Simon. I think unless it's underpinned by a really strong show that somewhere near the top of its game, or at least heading to the top of a new game, then I suppose it is all all academics. That's Roblox BBC Wonder Chase featuring. The Doctor and Ruby, you, you'll be able to get that through the, I think it's on uh, PC, mobile, PlayStation, Xbox, pretty much pretty much everywhere. Roblox is enormously popular. It says that the younger audiences use it in their millions. 71 million people wow. access Roblox wow. as a platform every single day. Wow. Now, and I'm then, not sure how... <laughs> the, 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 they're basically Lego people, aren't they? I mean, it's, it's just Lego, oh, That's it? what it's making me think of, yeah. Is this this kind of marketing in reverse then, that rather than them hoping that kids who watch Doctor Who will then watch Roblox, are they driving it the other way around? It's not going to work. Like, really, that's it's just not going to work, is it? The ideal ideal scenario, Will, is if if it was a two-way street, isn't it? Yeah. The thing thing that gets me is, uh, I don't want to run it into the ground, you know, I want it to succeed, but... um, it feels very much now, and it has done really since the sort of mid Pizza Capaldi years, is it's kind of like it was when Colin Baker and Sylvester McCoy were the doctor in the late 80s, that you had this core audience of people who were really keen on it, us. Who um, followed it everywhere as a brand. But but the uh, the general public were getting less and less interested. And, and yeah. you, were, you didn't go to school on a Monday and hear people saying, did you watch Doctor Who? Um, and it's start, it's, that feeling is there now. And it has been for quite some time. The back end of Peter Capaldi through Jodie and into where we are now. Uh, I can remember when Eccleston and, and Tennant's first couple of years... Um, I can remember going to work on a Monday morning and you'd hear people who were not Doctor Who fans in the way that we are saying, did you watch Doctor Who on Saturday? And and it, that has all dried up. You, I don't hear it anywhere. I don't yeah. hear anybody talking about it. Anybody. Not not just, you know, adults who've grown up with it. Children. There is, I don't hear, any, hear it being talked no. about anywhere. Uh, and I don't... I'm not saying it isn't being talked about, but my experience is that it is only us discussing it and we're, and yeah, we're the well, only ones looking forward to it in any well, way. I'm, I'm happy to say that I do know one place where it is being talked about. In the live chat here on YouTube. Rumble, <laughs> Very on good. Facebook. Let's go and catch up with I've some of our it. friends there. I've got to say, oh, bless you. <laughs> She's missed it so much. She's gone. She's gone. <laughs> She's fallen off. She's fallen off with excitement. Yeah. What's that character from Bewitched who just disappears in the blink of an eye? It's just, it's not, it's just bring on the light. Hi, guys, and welcome to Type 40. <laughs> Sorry. She's back. I'm back. <laughs> you can't sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, right. You said chat. And I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, don't worry there. We yes, we have got we've got some we've got some questions. We've got some sensible ones too. Hello, who family? Welcome back, says Mark oh. Milf. Thanks, Mark. Welcome, Welcome back, back to you. you Mark. Welcome Good back. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Lord Foth's here too. We've got Christian here from the Legend of the Travelling TARDIS too. Uh, good to see you, Christian. Hope you're well, mate. Uh, Tardis Travels is there. Hi, all. And Darren's in as well. You see, I, I can't say the Darren zone anymore. Can you change it back? Oh, <laughs> Darren. Dar- Darren, why? I, no. I've looked forward to that. But it's, it's all right. It's not that so do it anyway. The Darren zone. Thank the you. Darren yeah. Zone. yeah. You change it back by default. <laughs> it's like changing the Doctor Who theme. Change it back. <laughs> we don't like change, Darren. You should know this. <laughs> Uh, Matthew Burroughs wants me to shred a version of Doctor in Distress. I could Can never we just shred, shred it in general? My, my 12 inch vinyl. No, it's a treasured <laughs> item, Shy. It's a treasured item. That's what okay. I hear from Simon Horton. <laughs> Hang on. That's, that's me. Two places at the same time. I say that. That's, that's, weird. that's weird. That's weird. You look Heretics different as well. He does look different. No glasses. 
<laughs> oh god, it is you. It's like Clark Kent effect, isn't it? <laughs> Dudley's favourite Doctor Who fan, the heretic himself, is in the live chat. Hi guys, is this one actually live? I'm late to the game. Somebody yeah, it really is. Let's go, let's go. We're live as live as we'll ever be. Uh, but Michael Q's in as well. Hello, Dan King of the Greeks. I didn't know you were Greek. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Greek <laughs> god, Dan. You're a Greek god in your own lunchtime. At last, at last. Good to have you here, Michael. Thanks thanks for that. Uh, Mark Milford's there asking for caricatures. Yeah, I've already done them all, mate. Uh, so many times over, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. We, we've got lots of hellos. Hello to everybody. Uh, John's in the live chat too. Hello, hello John. John. Everyone. And Simon Ashley's here too. Everybody back from Easter. Oh, hey, it's so nice. I see all the names. I want, to know, I want to know who's been hitting the gym after overindulging on the on the old Easter eggs there. That's not that's me. Good. Yeah, yeah. Thanks <laughs> for the there, <laughs> uh, Dan uh, says, James, a Fitzpatrick, Dan, your hair is excellent today. Well, it's I've achieved <laughs> maximum volume. <laughs> it is defying gravity. Yeah, I think I've got to get it sorted out soon. But uh, there, there we are. Hello, Simon says. Uh, this is Michael. Hello, Michael. Or oh, maybe it's another Simon Michael. in the chat. Who can say? But any, hello anyway. Could be. Could be. Hello, everyone from Gas. The man Gas is back. Good to have you back, Gas. Hope you've had a good break too. Uh, Simon asks, "Yeah, we're recovered from eating too many Easter eggs." I only ever have. Somebody laughed at me for saying this. I only ever have one Easter egg annually. Somebody, I said that to somebody a couple of weeks ago, and they found that hilarious. I don't have any. I don't do Easter eggs. I do cream eggs. No, I do cream eggs. Oh, I don't do God. Easter eggs. They just oh. Easter eggs just seem such a rip off because you just get this hollow egg. You pay about five quid for it and just go and buy a bar of chocolates. Give me your addresses. Okay. <laughs> Not having that. I think, I think I think it's because some people eat them sort of solidly, don't they, for months and months and months on end in the room. I just eat chocolate solidly for months and months on end. Cream I don't eggs as well are a shout and a half, yeah. Okay, this is fine. I'll sort it all out. I'll remedy it. <laughs> uh, Gary Aker says, hello, Will. Hello, Retro Duck. Hello, Gary. You look like you're about to tell us a story, Will, the way you're sat, the way you're playing. <laughs> Jack and Ori. <laughs> Jack uh, and Ori. Side. Yeah, <laughs> and, I'm trying to hold back till it actually gets released. <laughs> Are you all sitting comfortably? <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time. <laughs> Darren M says greetings and felicitations. Hope all are well. Oh, I'm gorgeous pretty well. Word. Yeah, pretty well. good words. Not half bad love. It's the proper amount of mac and cheese, says Christian. I have no idea what he means. Oh no, this really annoys me. In England, it's macaroni cheese. If you don't mind, it'll never be mac and cheese for me. I know it is I mean, for it Americans. Makes sense. But... <laughs> It it's makes sense, but cheap. it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be joined again by Cheryl in the in yeah, the live Cheryl. chat there. Hello. Good to see that you. Wonderful coat that she made, isn't it? Wonderful? Yeah, yeah. Uh, also joined by some of the Delta and the Bannermen Massive here to support yeah. me, and uh, Alex. <laughs> Alex, uh, Hello, in Alex. The live chat too, defending the twin dilemma. It's, I think we have to have an entire live stream defending some of these stories. <laughs> I don't, I don't oh think he's quite Christ. defending it, so much he's just saying it's, there's worse out there now. <laughs> there didn't seem to be at the time, but there is now. <laughs> yeah, don't want to put words in your mouth there, Alex. Yeah, you, don't, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't over <-egg> it. <laughs> yeah, Matthew Burrow says twin has its, has its moments. Of course they do. Of course yeah. they do. Nice to see Will back again. Thank yes, you, that's you. Says Cheryl. Yeah. So you, you found there. And uh, Lawrence Steele says, Great story. Which one, Lawrence? Twin Dilemma, I'm guessing. Twin Dilemma. Maybe. Maybe. Lawrence, we need to know. Yeah. Uh, McCoy winked first. You've got to be careful how you say that, Sean. Sure. McCoy oh, yeah. winked <laughs> first, says yeah. Alex. Of course, he pioneered <laughs> the winking, didn't he? He certainly did. My, my mother hated that. When, so when, I hated it. Well. it. I'm with her. Around, she was watching it with me to see what the new Doctor Who was going to be like. And uh, she got through the title sequence and this face solidifies. And the moment she went, diddle do like that, she went, right, he's just ruined it. <laughs> before he'd even done a scene. <laughs> it made me jump at first. I remember watching I, it. I, 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 yeah, I didn't like it. I never liked it. <laughs> never liked it. This should take a laugh. Just go, oh wow, that's a super good point. Awesome. Thanks, Vanessa. You always have my back, love. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the time scale says I just hope they don't start dropping all eight episodes the same day. I don't think we're in any danger of that. My 
But then again, I thought that about, yeah, about who changing say? time slots the way that yeah, they have. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Who can say? John, John also says, I think Shah is bang on Aww. with that view. It's uh, just, this is going to be spectacular uh, without mm. anything to back it up the last few years. I'm not mm -hmm. convinced by Shooty, but I'll be happy to be proven wrong. See, well, oh, I think that's, that's the case gorgeous. with a lot of Doctor Who Love fans. That. We'll be happy to be proven, happy to yeah. be yeah. proven wrong. This is a good that point. No one really... wants it to fail. Like, no, no one wants, wants it to be bad, you know. People. I mean, there are, there, are, there are some. There's always some. You know, just mm. like there's, there's some extremes on one side of the aisle, there are definitely extremes on the other side of the aisle as well. But I think most people, as I've always said, in this case, the general public too, this show, particularly in Britain, is such a part of British culture. Most people want to want to watch this. You've got to give people reasons not to watch Doctor Who. Yes. It's that mm. much a part of British culture. I yes, do believe that. Yes, correct. Well said, well said, Simon. Oh, so, thank Simon. you. I don't know what I said, but thanks anyway. <laughs> and Sean from Review It Yourself says, preach, Simon, preach. Yeah, I know that, that was when I was going on saying that it ain't Doctor Who anymore. <laughs> Reverend Horton. So, yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Keep those comments coming, everybody. This is what we want more of. Yes, a bolster our egos and challenge our arguments by all means, but chat amongst yourselves as well and enjoy the live chat here with us on YouTube, Rumble and Facebook as always. There's always plenty to talk about, lots to share together. And uh, yeah, whether it's what's to come in the in the future with Shuti Gatwa or back in the past 40 years to the Twin Dilemma, or maybe 50 years like Shaw was to Carnival of Monsters or back even further. There are there are no wrong answers and we, we want to hear what you've got to say about all of it. Okay, so where, where shall we go to next? I Ooh. think we should go as he buys a bit of time yes i think we should go here where are we there no, there we go there there, there. there. <laughs> you a big fan big fan of disco sha like a disco yeah i i i want the outfit <laughs> um, yeah yeah it, because if there's ever a, a Doctor Who villain, villain? Oh, yeah, I think they're sort of villains. A Doctor Who creature, monster, whatever you want to call it, that, that is confined and belongs in the disco era, it has to be the Mavellans, Simon. I was fascinated by the Mavellans when uh, I was a kid, were you? Oh, yes, I wanted the outfit, which probably tells you a lot. Um, <laughs> it tells you all you need to know. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the Mavellans. I love the Mavellans. As a kid, when I was, what, 11, when they were on, I just, I was obsessed with them. They're just a brilliant, they are a brilliant design. I don't care. They are locked in the past. You're right, they're dated. But they're still a brilliant design. Great. And those guns, the guns. Very sci-fi ABBA. I like it. <laughs> it is a bit like a sci-fi I mean, you're right. This is, the kind of, this is the kind of outfit that you would have found dancers on the Kenny Everett video show wearing maybe Will or Legs and Co on top of the pops at a push, isn't it? He's, he's too stunned. He's, he's just stunned. too stunned. It's, it's, the tight, it's the tight leggings, isn't it, Will? Yeah, but <laughs> the, it's, the, it's the braids, it's the bright white, and the, the guns, the handguns being yeah, electric yeah. pink as well. It's yeah. so oh much of its time. time. I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure that I made those guns. I'm sure, I'm sure I made one out of cardboard after I seeing we, that. Yeah, I, I think you probably all did, Will, back, back in the day. Way. Yeah. I remember making the spaceship too. Um, and so I was very fascinated by that revolving door that they had to, to get in and out. And I made a model at a cardboard of the spaceship and used the toilet roll as a revolving door. Do you know what, Will? You've, you've just reminded me, and I completely forgot about this, but I made the spaceship as well. <laughs> but I went one better, and I made it in my metalworking class. Ooh. And, I, and I'd completely forgotten about that. I mean, I don't think I got very far. I think I probably got as far as, you know, the, the kind of top little bit that you can see there and the little bit at the top. But, yeah, I started to make one in my, in my metalworking class. Yeah. Wow. Completely forgot about that until you just reminded me of it. Is yeah, it anywhere? Is there any evidence of it? No, it's all, I, I can only know where it is now. It's mangled up and long since lost. But, I remember uh, yeah. finding them very mysterious, the Mavellans, that, that, like, the, they all have that identical look. Mm. and um, not being able to work out which ones were men and which ones were women. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the idea, was wasn't it? They were deliberately androgynous. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. And it, and it worked. I was nine years old, and, and the, whole, the, whole, um, the whole thing of what are, what, are, what are they doing on Scarrow, you know, 
the, the episodes get sort of pointed up for being too humorous and that undergraduate humor that Douglas Adams put in. But as a nine-year-old, I was absolutely drawn in by this one. I, I was fascinated by the fact that they had landed on the planet of the Daleks and they were looking for something. And the doctor, it disturbed the doctor that they were looking for something. And then, of course, they find Davros. Um, and then finding out what the Movellans actually are. I mean, remember being really shocked when the, the material on the chest is pulled apart and you see that circuit inside mm. it. Realize oh, it. I'm glad it was a circuit. Yeah. <laughs> not family friendly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, nowadays it'd be, it'd be some gross tattoo or something like that. But, uh, yeah, not what I was thinking about again. I, one, of the reasons why, <laughs> one of the reasons why I liked them then and like them now, I think, is because it was the height of the Star Wars era. We were waiting for the Empire Strikes Back to be released, and they looked a little bit like stormtroopers. They looked like the kind of BBC sort of stormtroopers where you could make a, an army of them and imagine there was more of them than there actually was i used to draw my own mavellans cut them out and cut out daleks as well and play mm. with them i would i would uh sellotape them to my bedroom wall and uh, move them around as if they were locked locked in combat that was a massive part of my childhood as you said simon from the 1979 story destiny of the daleks and they are a striking design mm. and they're about to be immortalized in plastic. This was announced today from Character Options. A set of new action oh, wow. figures, the Ruins of Scarrow Collector <laughs> Figure Set. It says Character op Options is excited to announce the release of this brand new online exclusive Doctor Who Collector's Figure Set, inspired by Destiny of the Daleks. It's a three figure online exclusive presenting the two main protagonists in the classic story, the Mavellans and the Daleks. The striking and beautiful Mavellan robots come with a blaster accessory, whilst the Dalek figure is preloaded with uh, those distinctive bombs there that they wear in the latter part of the story. <laughs> all figures are 5.5 inch scale as always, and they come with various points of articulation and all that. and all that jazz. And they come in a, in a, this is what they describe as a beautifully presented uh, bit of packaging with a diorama insert uh, and all. So yes, this is the latest of these collector sets. Some of them, they go into B&M shops, don't they? And some of them are online exclusives. People scour the country looking for these. I can never find them. We live in one of those pockets where they just don't bother, basically, Sean. Sure. They just don't bother. So I've given up in, in a lot of cases. But uh, in this case, it's, it is online. They sell out quite quickly. So, yeah, I, my eyes lit up when I heard this was coming out. I think two or three weeks ago, there were some sort of uh, leaked images of it, Will. But now I've seen it, I think, oh, I really want this so that I can yeah. potentially reenact my childhood. You know, I don't have to draw them and cut them out anymore. I can get I can get these, but I have to buy a lot of them to fill up my wall this time. Just put me off. <laughs> I, I, You'd be if, spending if a I lot of money as well. If yeah. these had come out in 79, I would have wanted them. Oh, we all them. would, Will. Desperately wanted them, yeah. Can you imagine? We th These would have flown off the shelves oh, in 79. Yeah. I, I love with the Dalek, the way they've got the bombs just all haphazard around the shoulder section, yeah. exactly as they were on screen. Mm -hmm. They could have lined them up. They could, they could have done it all nice and neat. But no, they've gone for the haphazard look. Brilliant. Love oh, that's it. deliberate. Oh, fantastic. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's clearly deliberate, that really clever. A major issue that they've had with these collector sets is people going online and scalpers ordering a ton of them and literally crashing the website. That's happened several times, sure. And then uh, basically most people can't get them. And within a day or two, those sets that scalpers have bagged, they'll turn up on eBay going for silly money, anywhere between sort of double the, their price and up to 200 pounds uh, these so what they've done is they've limited these on their website to two units per customer and the recommended re retail price is 39.99 that's what they, that's what they're up for at the character options website at the moment so for all our billing and cooing simon when you hear that price tag does does that send your enthusiasm down oh, a little bit? Uh, well, it's not cheap, is it? I have to be honest. I, I, no. that's, that's more, I, I would have thought maybe 30 quid. Um, you, you know, if, if you're looking at this on the shelves in uh, B&M, what do you, to be honest, you probably expect it, what, about 19.99, 24.99, something like yeah. that? So it does seem a bit uh, steep. But, it's you know, look, it's worth it for the Mavellan guns alone. You know, I think I've probably paid 40 quid for just one of those little dinky, little dinky pink, pink guns. So, uh, yeah. 
You need to get that out of it for Lenny. Yeah, for do you know percent. what? Beads and all. <laughs> do you know what? The beads. I, <laughs> he might make an appearance in a minute, actually, Lenny, and we'll see what he thinks. <laughs> I have to be. I have to be honest. When I actually finally saw this set. I was disappointed that there's only one Dalek and two Mavellans. I would kind of like two of each. And then when I saw the price tag, Will, I'm instantly out. There is no way yeah. I'm going to pay £40, which is the best part of a of a, a new season box set of Blu-rays, for example, £40 yeah. pounds for for these. Yeah, I good love these characters. This is the, uh, this story, and I say this this story and these characters are really tied to my childhood. Yeah, I would I would love these, but I you need at least two Daleks, and then I would Absolutely, have probably yeah. have paid forty pounds at a push, at an absolute push. And there's several comments here in the live chat here that these are just too expensive. I mean, what what yeah. do you think, Will? Well, the, I, I suppose it depends what you want, doesn't it? I, yeah. To my mind, yeah, uh, well, these are aimed at our generation, the people who watch Destiny of the Daleks as children, and they want them just on display on a shelf type of thing. But if, if they're marketing them for, for kiddies to play with them, no, uh, that is way too steep. Uh, like you say, you'd need more of them to, to, to play Doctor Who in a, in a play set type of thing as yeah. a child. And there's no yeah. way parents are going to fork out two lots of uh, 39.99 or whatever it is. There's no way they will do that. So is it is it aimed at us, people who, who remember yes. it fondly and they're yeah. just well, play when they lab, when they label something a collector's figure set and you can only get them on a website, I suppose mm. how many kids have got a credit card access yeah. you know, are gonna go online and, and are able to order something like this. I would imagine that some children will be gifted them for mm. for a birthday or, or, yeah. or I, can't, well, I don't Christmas. know Dan I'm not sure at 40 quid I'm not sure as there will be many kids getting these as a as a present you know what would have been cool if they put a Nova device in there I'd have loved to have seen a Nova device it have gone that would, as, the, as the fourth thing that would have been cool okay and they could easily have done something like that and that would have been totally unique and very very cool to have in there we so, need more sexy robots in Doctor Who yeah, I, strikes. <laughs> I, I would generally speaking, yeah, I'd sign off on that. That'd be good. Uh, this Nothing set is over, way overpriced. There's no way this will sell out. You know what, Fly Highland? I think it probably will sell out anyway. That's, I think it because will. Ju it's just like Will says, isn't it, Shy? If people are prepared to pay it, then you, can you blame them for charging it? Yeah. No, literally supply and demand. I think it's awful that they're charging that much when, you know, there's people out there that can't even afford to put their heating on. Um, yeah, good point. At the same time, yeah. you know, it, it's it's a business, and if people yeah. will pay it, then that's on them, isn't it? They, you know, they know really they're aiming at people with the collector gene, aren't they? They're the those. I'm yeah. not a collector. I'm not a collector of merchandise, so it doesn't affect me. But those who are want everything with that logo on, and mm. uh, yeah, they know they'll that's pay. It. They know they'll pay it. It's yeah. But someone uh, in the chat actually. Uh, a bit up said something like i think the silorians were once priced at that and then they were half priced at so and so so sometimes i don't get it right but yeah i'm i agree with you dan i think it 100 percent will sell out if you are a diehard fan of that and that story and that villain if you can can you call him the, yeah they're definitely yeah, villain, aren't yeah. They? um then yeah of course but me personally no i would not buy that for myself and i certainly would buy it for any of my children um because i don't think 40 pounds is something you buy for that kind of thing but that's that's just me that's just me no no you know no judgment on anyone that does want to pay for that no, more power to you yeah you want it get it yeah 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 it's you as you said will i would have loved these when i when i was a child i would have i would have played at merry hell for these and, and put them on the christmas list and all the rest of it Ooh. just as charlotte says in the live chat our charlotte lovely to see you charlotte says they suit being turned into figures very, very well. Yeah. They do, don't mm. they? It, it's strange that it's taken them so long, Simon, to do this. Yeah, well, it's, to be honest, it still amazes me that they've never come back into the show. I've never understood why. They did make a very brief cameo at some point, didn't they, in, in yeah. vaguely, as I recall. But I, it's amazing me that they've never they've never come back into the show. Maybe in the art, in the, uh, sorry, in the JNT years, they would have been perfect um, in the 80s as well. There we go. Yeah, that's 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 it, isn't it? And and look at them. They I mean, don't they look cool. fantastic there? You know, they don't look dated yeah. there. Yeah. No, I, I, I do wonder why they've never been brought back. This just, is a very they're, they're very a unique brief. design. They're a unique villain, and it just seems a shame. Doctor Who 
uh, has has so few sort of villains that are unique and and really still resonate and they do and they would and yeah bring them back come on get them back in the show there you uh, go Russell. Heretic. you want you want old things bring it back yeah yeah. Classic thing, heretic, sorry. Uh, Not old. Yeah. Heretic, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to say that Heretic's experience has completely mirrored mine. That all our local B&Ms, just as you say there, Heretic, yes, none of them ever have character sets. I've been to all those branches. You're quite right. So, yes, that's signing off on that. This was the moment. It might be a Midlands thing. Because they don't have them in Leicestershire yeah, either. There are, there are pockets all over the country where they get a ton of them and, and others that they, they just bypass them completely. But this is the moment from the pilot back in 2017 when the Mavellans did very, very briefly return to Doctor Who. They put them in the trailer and I got ever so excited, Simon. And so when he <laughs> turned up and it was a blink and you'll miss it appearance, I was yeah. proper gutted. I mean, they are barely in it, aren't they? What is it, about one shot, literally about yeah, one shot this. or something. It's basically this, then one of them falls over or gets shot or something like that. That's your lot. You kind of think, why did they go to the trouble of making all those wigs and the costumes and the guns just for one shot? Sad. Yeah. There we go. Maybe Very they intended sad. to use them again, or maybe it was something that they could have uh, used. Maybe they've still weird. got the costumes in, in storage, Dan. Maybe they haven't, so That'd they could come back fairly easily. Come on, Russell. Sort it. Sort it out. Sort it out. So let us know what you think in the live chat. Yeah, who, Are you going to be ordering these? John Yordan says he's already bought one. I think several people oh, already have. Like. Because also, a lot of people just saying this is too steep at 40 sheets, just like Real Super Doctor says. Uh, James A. Fitzpatrick says, I just want to see Dan and Simon in the <laughs> wigs. Uh, well, James, we're going to get it started. Don't you worry. It is we, on. We, it is we, on. we need this, don't we? We do. Let's yeah. get Mavell and Wigs. We need to do a whole show at some point in Mavell and Wigs. That'll definitely. be one of, the, one of the tiers when we get the Patreon up there. For, I'll pay for, for it. <laughs> I'll pay for all of everyone in the chat as well. <laughs> the price is hard to take, but they were offloading their Warriors of the Deep set at just £15, including PMP. I snapped it up. But was that an online exclusive, though? David, that's the I think that's the difference. Oh, I yeah, still I, I wonder what is of the deep set. Please, please, where do I get one of those from for fifteen quid? Send me put the link in the chat, please. I want one. I want one. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so the these are available right now on the character options website. It's the the ruins of Scaro collectors figure set. You get two Mavellans. Uh, you get I think one of them is the Suzanne Daniel Danielle one, and the other could be Tony Asoba's character. I'm Looks not like quite it to me. Sure. Oh no, I think they are both ladies. They both got, they both got jokes. So yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, they are. are. They are women. So uh, you get the guns as well. So yeah, you've, you've certainly got the one Dalek. They see that I'm out with only one Dalek. I'm out. But if you do get these for your collection, by all means, let us know what you're thinking. Have you pulled the trigger already, or is the price tag putting you off? Let us know in the comments section, please. And keep keep the uh, keep the comments coming. Yeah, I love it all. Uh, James A. Fitzpatrick says, my husband is a Star Wars fan. Action figures are way too costly because of the manufacturing costs. I've heard this. Yeah, it's something, mm -hmm. the, the, the materials have meant, wasn't that one of the reasons that the original figure line went during the Matt Smith era? They dropped them down from sort of 10 inch to 5.5. I can't quite remember, but that was a whole drive towards to, towards using less of that material. Yes, yes. Uh, these classic figures are absolutely, absolutely for us. Uh, we need more sexy, period says Lord Thoth. There we are. <laughs> I don't think I could possibly close out that item with anything better. So fill your bits <laughs> with these if you've got 40 quid that you want to want to spend on the Ruins of Scaro set. And let us know. Post some pictures. We, we'd love to see. Are, are you, have you sort of... A, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to get them out and, and play with them? Or do you just like to put them on the shelf to dust and stare, safe in the knowledge that that gap in your collection will always, always be, be filled? I think at the end of the day, I'm not going to have a go for them for them charging these sort of prices when people are prepared to pay for them. I suspect that mm -hmm. they're probably in short supply by now, but let us know what you think by all means. Say something nice. Otherwise, I'll destroy the universe if you don't watch Type 40. I love her. <laughs> so do I. Uh, staying, staying with merchandise just for another few minutes. Uh, this is the the range of audio originals from mm. the BBC. Uh, oh, you've got a, a knowing noise there from Will Hadcroft. So these releases, well, they come they come on single CDs, don't they? And they they're do. proper 
audio books uh, read by one voice, usually somebody from the Doctor Who cast, isn't it? That's how they pick match the reader to yeah. the story. But you, you, my friend, you've had great success, haven't you, with your first title for this range, which we, we reviewed that on the podcast, didn't we? That's the Resurrection Plant. Again, congratulations with that. It was, it was. Uh, when was it out? Nearly two years ago now? Uh, August 2022, it came oh, out. Wow. Time flies, doesn't it? Time flies. If you haven't got this in your life and in your ears yet, I recommend you do so and check out the podcast where, where uh, Will told me the entire story behind the story of the Resurrection Plant too. That was that was brilliant and a real privilege. But you did let us know, didn't you, on that episode, Will, that a second story was on the way. You had been recommissioned and that something was coming. But now the cat's sort of out of the bag isn't it about Doctor Who dark contract? So what can you yeah. tell us now? We've got a release date, haven't we? And I understand you you may have the name of the Doctor Who cast member who's going to be reading it too. I do, yeah. So it's a fifth Doctor story. So it's fifth Doctor, Adric, Tegan and Nyssa. And I now know that the reader is Matthew Waterhouse. Oh, wow. lovely. Oh, congrats, bro. That's wicked. Also, I've, I can't share it with you because I've been forbidden... But uh, I have seen the cover art as well, and it's magnificent. I can't wait oh, till that goes great. up. I've, it needs to have the logo and the title put on and everything, but I've seen it, you know, just as a piece of art, and I couldn't be happier. So uh, when that goes up, that'll be worth getting excited over. Oh, fab news, time, well, made up for you. That's wicked. You. Yeah, well done, for well. The time being, for the time being, we've got a little placeholder there, but I, I'm itching to see this artwork as well because I know, I know who's doing the... Doing the uh, duties on this range now they've kind of redefined them a little haven't they will they brought in a new style with the diamond logo yeah. and with a with a bit of look there's going to be more eyes and ears on this range now because as you were saying how a lot of people don't realize that they're not big finish and that but that does seem to yeah. be changing doesn't it i think so people seem to be becoming more aware of them uh, when the resurrection plant came out and, uh, and i was at uh i was either hooverville or big finish day i think it was hooverville um, and uh, somebody came up to me and said, uh, well, I can't find this anywhere on the Big Finish site. I've been looking all <laughs> over. I, I had to say, it is none there. It's not Big Finish. It's BBC Audio, and, and they, they had no idea what I was talking about, and these, of course, are serious fans. They've gone to a convention, but they don't know what the audio originals are, but it does seem to be changing um, on Twitter. I, I think thanks to this show and the conversations we've had, more and more people are becoming aware of them. And that the what I love about the audio originals is that they're not just a voice and that's it. You know, in the old days, you just had a voice reading a book, didn't you? Uh, but these are enhanced with uh, sound effects and incidental music. Um, and the guy who did... Uh, my, my man, Mr. Hines. <laughs> uh, he... The sound designer, David Rucroft, really brought that resurrection plant to life. All the background sounds and the industrial, kind of industrial revolution kind of uh, backdrop, yeah. even though it's on another another world. It has all that sort of found, those foundry noises and, and some of the uh, Doctor Who sound effects as well from classic series and modern, uh, instantly recognisable. I'm so glad to know that David Rucroft is doing Dark Contract because it's set in Dickensian London. And I, going by the resurrection plant, I know he's going to pull it out of the bag with the background sounds and really bring it to life. I can't wait to hear it. Very yeah, exciting. Really can wait. Yeah, so really exciting. It's exciting. released. It's up for pre-order already, isn't it, Will? And there's a link in the description to the video. It's released on the 18th of July, though, isn't it? 18th of July, 2024. Yeah. According to Amazon, yeah. So uh, it was, I think it was August originally, so they pulled it back a month, which is nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I won't get to hear it until everybody gets to hear it. I don't get an advance really? copy or anything like that. So, uh, what? Wow. Um, yeah, they don't, they don't send me an advance of the audio. I might get what? the CD. Of your maybe, own story. <laughs> I might get the CD maybe a few days before it hits the shops type of thing. But uh, when the resurrection plant came out, the, the advance order, uh, didn't arrive until after it had been published. <laughs> so, oh my god! I already heard it, and I was still listening to the little bit of uh, the excerpt thing on Amazon. Thinking, I like it. 
<laughs> wow. That's quite an appetite for Doctor Who dark contract, Will. If it's any, if our live chat yeah. is anything to to well, judge I by, a, I have a, this a, one, Will, so, there's comments. a young man called um, Jamie. Strangely enough, uh, oddly enough, um, who he bought the resurrection plans. He came with his mum to an event in Blackpool, uh, and he he had a signed copy of it from me. And then he oh. uh, contacted me via his mum's account on Twitter the other day. Yeah. Say how much she was looking forward to that contract, and he was hoping that I would sign that for him as well. Oh. So when I said earlier that, you know, young, young people are not talking about it, well, some young people clearly are, you know. But he's one of <laughs> us. I was, I was talking about the general public earlier. He's one of yeah. us. He absolutely loves Doctor Who. So he's really looking forward to that contract. So that, that touches my heart that um, I – yeah. I expect people who watched the Davison era when it was broadcast to be looking forward to this. But when, really a, young, when a youngster is excited about it, that, that mm. touch. It's so unusual. It's so unusual. I've not even got to Davison yet. <laughs> I've only watched a couple of stories, so I'm not, I'm not even there yet. So, uh, well, yeah, that's, that's lovely. He knows his stuff, this boy. He was he was talking about, you know, story titles and he, he loves the um, historical stories that have a, a little bit of a, an alien twist to them. And that's what Dark Contract is. So uh, it's going to be right up his street. He'll, he'll, he'll enjoy it. You have to bring him on. Wait. <laughs> I'm sure he'll... I'm sure he would he'll give, run, give us a run for our money, won't he? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, yes. Well, I can't wait until this is released, Will, and I, I'm going to twist your arm to come back and talk about it. I know there's, I don't want to go too deep into it right away. We want to give people a chance to hear it, don't we? But yeah. I do hope that uh, we, you can do another one of your behind the stories, the story behind the story with it here with us at Type 40 in time. But again, congratulations. I'm, I yes. certainly came to the week, so heaven knows how you must be feeling. Let us know. Well, one, there's going to be some Will Hudcroft say... fans. Yes. So, sorry, Dan. One thing I would say, which is nothing to do with the story itself, so not, I'm not giving anything away. Yeah. But like like a lot of people in my generation, when Adric died at the end of Earth, Earthshock, I cried mm. my heart out. Me too. And, <laughs> and, and it, it ran across several days. Uh, I was utterly bereft. The, the yeah. shock of him dying. Yeah. And the last line, you know, now I'll never know if I was right. It was playing over and over in my mind after the yeah. broadcast. And my mother feared for my mental health that week because I kept bursting into tears through the, throughout the week, thinking about it's it. It's mad how much it impacts you, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. crazy yeah. when you have so, something like that happen. To fast mm. forward 40 years and then have the, the actor who played him read a story in which, you know, his character is... Uh, the focal point for it um, and, and what happens to his character. Um, it's just, you know, to, to quote uh, full circle, <laughs> we've come full circle. We've come full circle. Um, <laughs> and it's, I wish, you know, my, my mother worried so much for me back then. It's a shame that she's not around now because if she'd have seen this, that uh, the, the, the actor who played Adric is voicing Adric in a story that features Adric. Yeah, she would be astounded by it. Oh, and and, and I, it sort of, sort of um, I don't want to use the word closure because it sounds too serious, but uh, <laughs> it, it has come full circle, you know? The, the yeah. thing that, that really deeply upset me way back, now the payoff is here all these years yeah. later. Decades later. Yeah. If, <laughs> if your appetite is, is already uh, up, for dark contracts, you can always go and get the resurrection plan. That's still available, Ooh. as is the entire range of BBC Audio originals. Uh, lots of great writers, to be fair. Yeah. Most of the doctors, I think, are represented in this range too, and it does yeah. seem to be going from strength to strength, due in no small part to the work of Will Hadcroft. Yeah, you did very well, didn't you, in the Doctor Who magazine poll last year for yeah. best audio book? You came, you came second, didn't you? Yeah, oh, the, that the, is awesome. Brilliant. The Power of the Daleks novelization uh, came first. So I can't moan about that, you know, uh, because no. it's a great story. And uh, Nick, I think Nicholas Briggs is the reader on that one, I think. But um, because the audio originals don't have their own category, um, if, if, it, if the audio originals were their own category, I would have been number one, uh, which is... Uh, 
very nice to know. But uh, mm -hmm. because they're including all their audio uh, output uh, in that survey, BBC Audio uh, in Doctor Who magazine, then to, to come second to Power of the Daleks, yeah, I'll have that. Yeah, yeah, you, can, yeah, you can't <laughs> knock that one, Will. <laughs> Andy, well Lane done, came, Will. Andy Lane came after me, so he would have been second if we'd have had our own uh, had our own category. Yeah. Get it into your life. Get it into your ears. And when you when you've done that, you've got a little more time. Uh, hit us up on the podcatcher of your choice. There with the Type Forty podcast. All the recent episodes are there at our home feed, Type Forty Podbean .com, or we're across Spotify and Audible, Amazon Music, all those places too. The most recent one is our new season preview. Yes, here we are again with another new season preview. This time we had Ian Levine on the panel as well to look at the upcoming season with us. All eight episodes, all those titles we dug in in deep and we used our imagination to maybe work out what all of them could be about and had a good chat too. And there was a long interview with Ian Levine there as well from before our chat with Tony Jordan of the Doctor Who Appreciation Society. There's my talk with Will as well there, Plant Life about the resurrection plant i do love a pun so get all of that <laughs> over at type 40 podbean.com ah yes this oh, is breathe, type Don, 40. Breathe. <laughs> oh, i'm spent <laughs> this is type 40 live where we talk about the entire universe both on and off screen keep the comments coming everybody there's more there's more i promise there's more on the way Well, joining me now is Paula Alash, who is from the Doctor Who Experience. Paula, great to see you. Just a few months ago, I was walking down here at Port Tiger. This didn't exist. This is amazing. You could say this building has almost materialised overnight, as if it was its own TARDIS. What's in here, Paula? Well, the experience is in two parts. The first part is a dark walkthrough. It's an adventure. You're going on an adventure with the Doctor. Uh, we put in the monsters a couple of nights ago, so we've got them in there now. So this is very much about Doctor Who past and present? Yes, definitely. The, the, um, the we've got all... Oh, what the... Goodness. This is, um, this is breaking news. Had the Doctor Who experience at Port Tiger, and the monsters have escaped. I've got to move... How very silly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was all that nonsense and noise about? Who knows? But yes, here we are. We're, we're back again with more Doctor Who talk. I've got Simon Horton. I've got Shaw. And I've got Wilk Hadcroft here. And we've been, we've been digging deep, talking about all manner of things from across the universe, all the latest news. But now we're off to somewhere very, very specific. A little while ago, Shaw, we were talking about how, uh, how, how we get a, sort of a, a dribble of, of information don't we and we're we're teased and then we get an absolute absolute deluge of hyperbole it sort of goes from one extreme to the other and it's been like that with with the showrunners i mean for years we had we had silence didn't we next to silence during during the jodie whittaker era chris chibnall said next to nothing but now the current showrunner he can't seem to stop he can't seem to stop rabbiting Shock. He, says, <laughs> he says he says quite a lot of things does Russell T. Davies about all manner of, of uh, things circulating in the Hooniverse. And not that long ago, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, he appeared on the on a podcast called We Like to Watch. Uh, that's, I don't know, that's, it's, uh, it's not as bad as it sounds, I promise. <laughs> but he was, um, he was lamenting, he was lamenting the loss of, of the Doctor Who experience, if you remember, that was in... Uh, we've just seen it on screen that was in cardiff bay for all those years and this is what this is what russell this is what our russell had to say and he said that doctor who experience lost a lot of money that's not a secret it just did i didn't know this <laughs> it, but apparently it's not a secret it just did he went on to say i loved it it was brilliant it was so lavish no wonder it lost money so it's kind of once bitten twice shy a lot of people want something like that again i think 
because of all the memories of going either to the Doctor Who ex experience itself when it was open from 2012 all the way up to, to 2017 there, or maybe from their, from their childhoods if they're from one of the generations from, that had come before Simon. Now, when you hear that it's commercial viability that's holding back any return of the Doctor Who experience or, or something that could be similar in 2024, I can't help but think, well, what was so different 50 years ago this week? Because it couldn't have been further from the truth back in 1974, could it? No, I, I think possibly part of the problem with that, uh, with, with that, the, the, the kind of experience was just so big, um, you know, it's just such a massive hanger that they've got to fill. And, and you know, back in the day, the Doctor Who exhibitions, they were very small. It's as simple as that. They were literally crammed into a, a broom cupboard. Um, and so maybe that's why it sort of lost money because, yeah, back in the day, oh, you, you know, the, the, the experience, the, the exhibitions were, were, as I say, they were small. It was as simple as that. Um, mm. And 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 it is you, you know it's fantastic that that, that we are we, we we are now celebrating fifty years of um, well certainly of, of the Blackpool uh, Doctor Who exhibition um, and and I just I don't know what happened with that experience I still don't understand how it managed to lose money I must be honest it amazes me it lost money I can only think it's from the size of it simple well, I was as that. really shocked I was really shocked when I read that because uh, yes yeah, so Blackpool. It's described as the Las Vegas of the North, even to this day, isn't it? But there was a Doctor Who exhibition there for, was it 12 years? And it opened 50 years ago? Last indeed. Week? That's, the, that's the story. Yeah, indeed it did. We are, we are literally celebrating uh, just a few days ago, 50 years. 50 years, Will. Wow. 50 years of, of Blackpool. Um, I mean, to put it in context, it's the, the, the origins of the Blackpool exhibition go back a couple of years before that. 1972 uh, was when the BBC opened their very first uh, exhibition, but that was a special effects exhibition at London Science Museum. The following year, they opened Longleat in 1973 as a direct result of the uh, of the 1972 special effects exhibition. And because Longleat worked, and 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 actually, Longleat is 51 years old because it was opened, it opened in Easter of 1973. But yeah, because it's 50 years exactly since Blackpool, that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, and so, yes, uh, on the 9th of April, 1974, that was when uh, the, the exhibition was opened, Blackpool exhibition was opened. And then on the 10th of April, so literally just five days ago, that was when it was open to the public. So the grand opening was the day before, and then it opened to the public finally on the 10th of, uh, 10th of April and, uh, and, and kept going then till 1985. It was, uh, it, it, it closed, uh, uh, I think I'm right in saying the final season was uh, was the uh, autumn season, summer autumn season of uh, 1985, um, yeah. and uh, it was it, the, the Doctor exhibition in Blackpool was the, um, the, the it was put together largely by Lorne Martin, and Lorne Martin was was responsible for for most of the. Um, for, for, for Longleat as well, uh, he he was responsible for sort of pulling it, pulling the whole thing together. Um, I only got to go to Blackpool once or twice. I can't quite remember. Maybe a couple of times. The original exhibition. Um, I think you went a number of times, didn't you, Will? Oh, I did. Yeah, I did. Well, I didn't find it for some time. I, re I remember. At the, as the closing credits rolled in the program, they say you yes. went to another two exhibitions: one in Longleat, yes, and one in on Blackpool's Golden used Mile. To drive I used me to mad I've never seen yeah. it. But then, yeah. my family, when we went, we used to go on the beach for a lot, you know, a lot of the time there, and then walk down to the Pleasure Beach where all the rides are. Um, so we never walked along the Golden Mile where the exhibition. Is situated is it was it princess street or church street i can't remember now. something like that but it was it but as that photo shows That's will it's literally yeah. just off the golden mile yeah. so the golden mile is the is the long road with the car on it that we're looking yeah, yeah, at yeah. in this picture and so and i was the same as you will when i first went to blackpool we we missed it i, I seem to remember walking along yeah. the entire road of the golden mile which is a it, it's called the golden mile for a very good reason it's yeah. a really really long road uh, and we missed it as a family. Yeah, we completely missed it because it was tucked just off, um, just off on the other side of the uh, 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 off the Golden Mile. Yeah, 
But I remember, I remember it was probably 1979 because it was the Delia Derbyshire theme. Okay. So it's pre-season yeah. 18, certainly. And um, I remember coming back with my family from the Pleasure Beach. We were walking all the way up that golden mile to the railway station uh, to get the train. And I could hear the music before I turned the corner. Yes. And so this, this would what you're looking at now that I would turn the corner and see that box. Yeah. But from all right. No, I think I was no, we were in the going up through the back streets. That's right. And I saw the box from the rear. And I could hear the tune and I, I knew what it was straight away. This is the Doctor Who exhibition they were always talking about. And it it was I can remember looking at that oversized police box and being mesmerized by it yes. and the theme yeah, tune. Me too. And uh, and then not being allowed to go in because we had to go and catch the train. So I had oh. to wait either six Aww. months or a year before I could actually go in. So you, so you didn't actually get in it that particular time? You didn't get not in that it? that time, no. So I spent months and months wow. fantasizing about going back to Whoa. it. Whoa. And then when well, we that's did... so similar to my story, it's, except for the fact that when I went in 1979, I was so small. The size of that box mm. and that wall as well that, that led you to the box, it's mm. all so big and imposing. And the, the also, when you... When you walked, well, when I walked up to the box, I was like five years old, staring up at it. Yeah, the yeah. box itself was so imposing and so big, and the sky behind it as well was big and blue, uh, and I just, I just got chills. I, yeah. you were overwhelmed. Completely, I got completely overwhelmed. I heard that I could, you could hear the music coming out of the doors, and yeah. I just, my little bottle just completely oh. went. Oh. And it, I had to wait, never mind months, I had to wait four years wow. to get a chance to go back Ooh. there. Wow. That's, well, I that's can cool. remember that, that bit on the front there where the cafeteria is. I can remember yeah. walking along there, and just before you turn the corners, there's a little sign with the diamond logo on and an arrow. That's right. They adopt an exhibition around the corner. And I can remember the music getting louder and louder as I got near it. And the excitement, I cannot tell you, the excitement it, yeah. of turning that corner and seeing that box and the, the doors the doors stop at the windows. I always remember that. Um, and I even made a model out of that once out of cardboard, a, a model terrace where the doors opened with the, without the windows opening with them Yeah, uh, to mimic that. And I can remember soaking in the detail of the box that on the, on the side of it, instead of saying police public call box, it's a police BBC TV box. I can remember details like that. <laughs> yeah. And on some years, they had the word TARDIS down the pillars. Yes, that's right. Computer in later years, in the 80s, they, they had uh, TARDIS down the That pillars. guy there on the right this leaning you, on it. This is you, isn't it, Will? This that is, is me. That is that you on the right leaning? Yeah. Full head of hair. Fantastic. My <laughs> Recently, my belly does not hang over my belt. Bless and, you. Uh, yeah, that I looking pretty cool, though. It has to be said. You do look cool. I think that would have been 1985. It's last year. So okay, I was 15 there. Yeah. And it's and it's interesting because I can see real super doctor. There we go. That 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 comment alone. You went inside it. Uh, the place had an odd smell about it. That's absolutely correct. It did have a very, very unique smell. I think it was kind of a combination of sort of um, hardboard, chipboard, whatever that, that, that they used to make oh. the, uh, the display cabinets and sort of foam latex and, yeah. and sort of the lights that, 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 that were in there would sort of burn the dust that was hanging. It did have, it's, it's really odd to say, but it did have a very, very specific, unique smell about yeah. it. Both Blackpool and Longleaf, they had exactly the same smell. Both and of it, them. Whatever, whatever they used to clean it with, whatever that product was, when they did the other exhibition years later on the, on the front, um, I remember going into that one and thinking, it's the same smell. It hit me when I walked through the door. <laughs> whatever they're using to clean this place, it's the same stuff. <laughs> we have a bit of continuity, Will. <laughs> a combination of Mr Sheen and dry ice. Yeah. But what, you, what we've got to get across to people who never went there or, or, or are too young to remember it is that you went into that box and sort of you paid the, for your ticket at the front there and you you went to the left and then it went down into a cellar. That's so the, right. The exhibition itself is all underground. 
Yeah. And I think what, what you were saying before, Simon, about the experience being huge. Yeah. Um, the, the, it was really the atmosphere created by it being a right. stellar that made all, all the difference. That's right. I, th I think what, what surprised me more than anything with both Longleat and Blackpool was I'd expected them, before I went, I, I expected them to be very sort of dry and, and um, you know, just a collection of, a sort of a bit like a museum, just a collection of dusty old scripts or something like that in a glass yeah. cabinet. And I hadn't anticipated what it was, which was a very sort of visceral um, experience that sort of fired all of your all, all of your, your your senses, not just your smell and and your sight. Just everything about the exhibitions was very. It, it, it was it, it was an assault on the senses, and it was far more dynamic and dramatic than I expected it to be. I, I thought it would be much more sort of subdued and downbeat and almost uh, every or, or, almost single step, sedate. even descending, even descending the staircase. Yeah. was was memorable because obviously that was very very dark when it was the doctor yeah. experience and you got yeah. the music obviously it was getting louder yeah and you know you were you felt like you were heading into the belly of the beast really yes yeah, yeah. that's stairs, very much they were, really, they were really steep weren't they the, oh yeah child i can remember oh, yeah. going down every step and going oh we're going in now you know yeah. it felt like you were entering the world of doctor who it's that's right and that's kind of what I always feel was sort of lacking with that experience. Not to knock it, it was a brilliant, the experience was brilliant, but it was lacking the atmosphere um, and it was lacking that sort of viscerality of feeling that you were entering the world of Doctor Who. And so you, it, for, for a kid, you were suspending disbelief. Uh, whereas actually, ironically, then that the experience was more of what I'd anticipated when I was a kid, which was it, it was drier. It was simply more, more sedate, more, more, more um more down you know down to earth um and that was what was great about blackpool and longleat um a little bit about the uh, the, the actual opening itself as i say which let's not forget it's 50 years ago 50 years ago exactly um there is the opening john pertwee uh, at one of his very very last uh public appearances in fact it might even be his last public appearance um uh, and of course, uh, Liz Sladen there as Sarah Jane Smith. To put it in context, you can actually see Agador, the the um, the statue. The the, the, yeah, the I've um, only just noticed that. Yeah, that's that's. The, there were two Agadors in in the nineteen seventy four exhibition. There was the there was the polystyrene statue that you can see at the back there. I wonder whether that actually survived. You do wonder whether whether a polystyrene <laughs> statue would have survived all those people. Uh, and then the Agador costume was inside uh, the the, the, um, the exhibition as well. And so nicely to put it in context, the Monster of Peladon was literally screening at this exact moment that, uh, that, that that they were opening it. It was on. Oh, that was the story that was screening when uh, when the um, when the exhibition was opened. And so as a result of that, apparently Elizabeth Sladen was very very nervous of doing this opening because she hadn't done uh, she hadn't done many uh, episodes at that point as far as she was concerned. Although I Actually, we were we were almost at the run of season eleven, so she'd actually been in what about four stories at this point, um, and so so the public knew her very much. But but in typical sort of self-effacing Liz Sladen style, she was very nervous, and it was John Pertwee that persuaded her and said, "No, trust me, you'll you'll have a blast yes, with this." And and um, Liz Sladen sort of said afterwards, she said it was the time that she saw John happiest of all. Because I guess season 11 was a bittersweet uh, experience for him to film, knowing it was his last season. And certainly by that point, he would have been, you know, he, he, he'd he already left the show. I, 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 without me look at the dates, I'm pretty sure they would have shot, they must have shot Planet of the Spiders complete by this point, because it would have been started screening in just a few weeks' time. And so he'd left the show at this point. And so she said that it was the happiest she sort of saw him. And Aww. she realised that it was the last time she would ever see him sort of happy with Doctor Who because he had left the show at that point and he'd gone. Um, so it's been a big sweet experience. What, what strikes me about the pictures as well, I, well, you could say, if it was now, you'd think, oh, this is really, really cynical and maybe they just... Uh, they they bus loaded a load of people in for the no. photo opportunity, but this was genuine, wasn't there? As Charlotte yeah. says in the live chat, look at the crowds. Yeah. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of people yes. in all the photographs that were taken on that day. This was huge, yeah. wasn't it? 
Yes, absolutely massive. And this is why, again, it goes back to what we were saying earlier on about Roblox, where this goes to show, uh, you, I don't think you'd have crowds like that queuing for a Doc 2 exhibition at this moment in time, but yet everybody wants to be there. Uh, apparently these chocolate cakes uh, came out, so the, the, these Dalek chocolate cakes. That's what John is cutting there, is a, is a Dalek chocolate cake to uh, to celebrate. I think Liz Sladen and John Pert, we both got to both got a chocolate Dalek cake um, oh, to celebrate. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a hefty cake, that is. We talked about chocolate earlier on tonight, and that is, that is what you call a, call a hefty chocolate cake. There, uh, and the, the stuff that was in the exhibition, um, from Patrick Trout years, you had things like Ice Warriors, Cybermen, even a Yeti uh, was in there. Um, from earlier Pertwee series, there were Daleks, of course, Ogrons, Draconians, spaceships from uh, Claws of Axos and Frontier in Space. There was a Sea Devil in there, um, an Axon, a Silurian. Mm. And then for, for, for what, what would have been really exciting for people visiting then was, was there was a lot from Season 11. So Lynx was in there. Of course, Liz Sladen's first story that had only sort of screened a few months before that. Um, all of the dinosaurs models from uh, Invasion of the Dinosaurs were there. Uh, the an Exelon, uh, a Zaxir, and Alpha Centauri from Monster of Peladon, which is as they were screening at the time. Uh, and the console room was in there. The, 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 the that uh, you know you brought the picture up earlier on the, 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 that the original console room with all of the with all of the various uh, tableau surrounding it. So it was a massive exhibition. This was the, the, you know, Will. It was a, it was a big old space that it filled. There was a lot crammed in there. Yeah, yeah, because the, the corridors were very narrow, weren't they? And mm. were like a maze. Yes, um, they doubled back actually, on themselves yeah. constantly, didn't yeah. they? I used to love the 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 the, uh, the exhibit where it looked like a bit of a forest or something, and then K9 would come trundling around. Trundling out. <laughs> stop, and then the light would come on in its head, the That's ears right. would go, yeah. and you'd get a, a little bit of pre-recorded speech from John Leeson, and then it would go trundling off That's back right. into the scrubs. Uh, and then you got to the end of the main exhibits and the, the Dalek shouting at you that you're about to enter the control room of the town. That's right. And it would open up, wouldn't it, into that mock-up control room. Yeah, which was which was just brilliant. That control room was oh, just fantastic. Yeah. I remember as a kid just Look. being blown away by being able to stand. And again, this is, I just hadn't anticipated this. To be able, there we go. Yeah, there to be able is. to literally stand in what, as far as I was concerned, that was the sh that was the console room on. that was used on, on telly. Yeah, and you know, I convinced myself thing. that was the one that was on telly. I used to love that it had the the interior, you know, ambience, the sound yeah. of the, in the inside of the control room. And then when the column yeah. started going up and down, you get the that's right. It fill the room that sound. And that's think, right oh, we're taking off because it, it, it was it was the sound design as much as anything because to say it was it was all senses sight smell and sound the yeah. sound design was just i'd love it's, to be able to get a recording what I would now well yeah, i think you can i think that, that they do exist those tapes do exist i think we've spoken wow. to to experts on the matter before which i know we'll, we'll come to a little later on i mean this is what they would now call shaw sensory you know the entire yes. environment, which yeah. um, which you did get some of that at the Doctor Who experience. And I, I think that the the one that they had in Manchester last year, Worlds of Wonder, I think they did a little bit of that, but nothing like on this on this level. It was probably a massive fire hazard having all this going on. <laughs> the least. Two, <laughs> on two floors underground, something like that. But that's how I remember it. I remember it all as being obviously I was very very small. Even even by uh, eighty three when I went back, I was still very young. But I remember yeah. lots of flashing lights, lots of rising and falling col columns blinking lights not knowing what anything did but uh, behind all that glass which is you know quite thick i could make out the shapes and the the contours of the creatures that had uh, mm. either terrified the life out of yeah. me when i was really small or that i'd got posters of on my bedroom wall at that precise time things like the garm or the tractators or whatever so it was an amazing experience for the one time i actually had the nerve to go in <laughs> and do you remember do you remember around the outside of the console room you can just about make them out in the background there, there were there were all those panels with lights on that you could push buttons yeah. and move levers on as well um I never one. I oh never good because i was thinking it's a shame that you can't actually touch i understand but well, you wouldn't yeah. be able to touch the console, but actually, if you are able to do that, that's yeah, you can. Uh, if you yeah, can, you can just about make them out, Shard. They're sort of just various levers and things like that, just on those panels, just below yeah. the windows. 
Um, and yeah, you go around. I mean, to be perfectly honest, a lot of them didn't work. The bulbs had gone and gone in them, or the bits, <laughs> the first bits had got pushed through, or whatever. But you could there were bits that you could do, and so you, yeah, you literally got your hands on with these with these little uh, switches oh, and levers and things. Do you, do you, do you think? Uh, do you think, Simon, that you know the the Peter Capaldi TARDIS interior? Yeah, had those things around the, the edge. Did, didn't it? Oh, it was, oh, do you think it was yeah. a throwback to oh, this? I it's never thought about there. that, but you're right. That's the only time I saw that. Did, that you're I right. That's like the Blackpool exhibition when I saw those levers and buttons around the edge. Never thought of it, but you're uh, right. Yeah, I I'd like to think they were influenced it. by it. Mm. it was, I bet, I bet they were because that was when Capaldi was at the height of his fandom. Wasn't yes, it? he I probably suggested it. Mm. I suspect that uh, somebody else who was at the height of their fandom was our doctor on call here, Stephen Noonan. Uh, Hi, Stephen, mate. Good to see you there. Oh, who this brought is the him Black in? Jesus yeah. Christ. I know. They let anybody bully in, don't they? Uh, I know, says, I know. <laughs> the Blackpool exhibition in the 70s smelt of carpet shampoo. Is that, is that the smell you can't quite put your finger on, Simon? I don't think it was carpet shampoo, Stephen. No, you could be right. I'm not saying you're wrong, but that's not what I remember. It, didn't, it definitely smelled of sort of hardwood and chipboard and perspex and and latex rubber that's what it smelt of to me but i could be wrong i'd love to go back i'd, I'd give anything to get in a tardis and go back to that exhibition yeah. i really really would just the best best possible times and i just remember you sort of get to the end and you just double back because you'd go back to right yes. to the beginning because you wanted to do it all over again yeah, just, yeah. i, just I got so that i could um when i was uh, into my teens and utterly obsessed with Doctor Who. Uh, when when the family were all going down to the pledge, because we go in the exhibition first, then so we do the, the the beach with all the sand on, make the sand castles, then go to Doctor Who exhibition, and then down to the pleasure beach. By the time I was like fourteen or something, I'd just say, "Can I not just stay in here?" Yeah, you know, you <laughs> go down to the, I think I may have ex- asked that as well. And uh, and she's my mother was not so keen on that leaving me on my own uh while they all went down to the pleasure beach and i remember her saying to me she said if we do leave you in here you're not going to go wandering off anywhere are you and then, <laughs> and then she, paused, she looked at my face and just paused and went no you wouldn't no you're not going to go wandering <laughs> off anywhere you'll stay right in here <laughs> yeah and i did <laughs> Uh, Charlotte Shield says here in the live chat, I always thought that not having a TARDIS set you could get near was a massive mistake in the yeah. Doctor Who experience. So they did. We had a, a similar kind of kind of thing in Cardiff. There you've got the barriers around the outside. But you, that's two or three feet away. There were control panels along the, um, the bars there that children could play with. And I think that they used to make things happen on the console i can't quite remember oh that's anyway. right that's right they got they got three kids in was it or or something to sort of stand there and pull a that's lever right. or whatever i'd shove them out of the way even at 29 i wouldn't even care i am um, what was i going to say i wish i knew but i've never been and i think that that's dreadful um my 17 year old self is stopping me silly uh for not being there but i always seem to just miss it I always seem to just be outside of it. You know, the one in Blackpool that closed in, what, 84? Or eight, 85, know. the original 85. one closed in late 85, yeah. Yeah, so I'd missed that. It wasn't even a twinkle in my mother's eye at that point. Um, but no, no disrespect. Um, and then when it was in Cardiff, that's the only one that I can even recall. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't old enough. I was still in school. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, my family weren't, massive i mean on doctor who to the point where they would do that now they probably would be because they yeah. know that i they, they know just how much i love it um and a few of my family members do but it's just just feels like i've always missed it always only just as well so yeah it's um, a bit of bit of an annoyance that i've never been and i do regret it but at the same time it's really nice to sort of hear your stories too um and i'm sure that if there's been one 50 years ago or that opened 50 years ago there's one that opened what 12 years ago there'll be another yeah. one at some point so I, i'm confident they will do another one at some point I, yeah. I do yeah. if i was a millionaire i would buy that blooming shoe shop that now occupies that yeah space. i would buy it and then get a license of the bbc and and restore that exhibition just so i can go in it again and, uh, <laughs> well, I'll ask. it's it, it's it, it, I mean, the closest the closest we've got to it now is Neil Cole's museum up in uh, up in Allendale. That is as close mm-hmm. as 
any of us will get to to a to a classic kind of a Blackpool or Longleat Doctor Who exhibition because it, it it's got the little narrow corridors and it's got the sound design and it's got the coloured lighting. Conceptually, um, it's the it's yeah. it's, it's uh, spiritually it's the son, the child, isn't yes. it? Of the original Blackpool exhibition. But yes, absolutely. But but just nothing can can match that Blackpool exhibition. And and I I, I was just as I say, it makes me go a bit gooey to think that it was exactly fifty years ago yeah. uh, that, that it's, it's um, opened. It was when you came out the control room. Remember that little shop at the end? Yes. Um, every you know in the David Tennant episodes where it goes, oh, I was hoping there'd be a little shop. A and little shop. Be, I like a little and shop. Every time he says it, I'm think I think of that little shop again. And yeah. I don't know if Russell <laughs> was thinking that when he wrote it, but I I wonder. And, and and you know, you just remember that shop was just incredible because oh, it's really full of stuff. Oh my goodness! It had got everything in there. It, again, I'd love to just get in a TARDIS and go back just to buy everything because it was all obviously brand new. Everything was brand new, so it wasn't like going to eBay and trying to get some ratty old copy that's all dog-eared and and and, and be dropped in the ponds. Um, you know, no, these were all brand new items, and you just went and you just hoovered them up. Except I didn't because I hadn't got the money. You couldn't afford to do it. Yeah. So, well, so you I, only got, I, I remember being allowed to buy sort of one thing, as I recall, from the shop, one, you know, one book or whatever. I have a memory of um, they were advertising after the programme a uh, BBC LP called BBC Space Themes. Yes. And it had the Delia Derbyshire theme on it. It had yeah. Blake Seven on it and uh, I think Star Trek and a few other things. But I, I thought, because on the cover art there were only five spaceships, I thought it would be like an EP with a, with five pieces of music on, and I went to the exhibition thinking I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy that BBC Space Theme. Yeah. So buy it. And uh, I, I must have been ten or something. And I remember going in there and then seeing that it was a proper LP. And yes, because they had it for sale in there, didn't they? I remember they did, that they did. And I I didn't have enough money. And I, I remember saying to the, the gentleman, I think he was, there was a lady who ran the shop and there was the, the gentleman who was the manager of it. And he was there as well. And I said, how much is the LP? And he said what it was. And I just, I can remember just looking in the palm of my hand and thinking, I don't have enough. Don't have the money. Yeah. And I oh. burst into tears in front of him. <laughs> did you let you have it cheap? They probably, it's kind of thing they would have let you just have cheap, actually, because that's how they were. He did, he did. I, I felt guilty oh. ever since because he just looked at me and I was sobbing my heart out in front of him. I don't have enough money. And he said, all right, son, all right, son. He was an irritated by me, <laughs> crying in the <laughs> shop. Uh, all right, son, all right, son. I'll make up the difference. Uh, and he... He oh. let me have it. So oh. I don't know the gentleman's name, but I it's a treasured memory that that he did. Oh. I think it's in the chat. That's lovely. Uh, I don't you know, I don't I, I don't remember right, my man. parents going and saying, Well, we'll, we'll go down and see him and pay him back or anything like that. I think you know, if uh, he people, let me have it. Some people in the live chat chat are quick to catch us up on the the fight of the Doctor Who exhibition mm. in Blackpool. I think we, we all know the story. In fact, you've been back to the scene of the crime in recent years, haven't you, Will? So well, here's you at the shoe cellar. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Considerably bloated and a uh, distinct lack of hair. Yeah. Uh, That's but, just such a cool photo, yeah, though, Will. Whenever I go to Blackpool, my wife laughs at me every time. I, I have to go to that corner. <laughs> Oh, you go back and I regularly. Have to, I have to stand at those doors because I only live an hour away. Bolton's only an hour away. Oh, in the car. wow. So I, we go at least once a year. And uh, I have to stand where those doors are. And if, if I put, if I, you know, if I put my uh, hands to my eyes to block out the sunlight, I can see the, the steps going down into the cellar yeah, through, yeah. through that door. And uh, yeah, it, it breaks my heart every time. I know it is. It's tragic. I miss it so much. Yeah, and I agree. I miss been, it. That might fit, seem a bit extreme, but I do. I, it, it has a big place in my heart. That that exhibition. And, 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 and likewise, Will that that one and the and the Longleat exhibition because I as I, said, I went to both and and yeah, they're a massive massive part of my childhood. And it was because in those days there was so little to do with Doctor Who. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, we're, we're talking at the time you mentioned the Weetabix cards earlier on, Dan. This was the time when you had yeah, pretty much all you got was Weetabix cards. <laughs> so to be able to go to this exhibition, it just was mind blowing because there was just nothing to do with Doctor Who. Do you remember? So do you remember finding out that it had gone? Uh, I didn't read anything about it being dismantled. No, it disappeared so quite quietly, we, didn't it? I went there sort of 1986, prior to Trial of a Time Lord being screened God. fully expecting i walked around that corner i don't think they'd take them off the diamond logo with the arrow but i was aware that i wasn't hearing any music yeah and i thought that's odd and then yeah. i turned the corner and it, it, a laurel and hardy exhibition was there police box had gone yeah a, a laurel and hardy exhibition and then a few years later as, you, as you've seen the shoe seller i was uh, yeah. it was a gut wrench to turn that corner Yes, be there. And and what's tragic, as as real super doctor says in the chat, there everything was thrown in a skip. Um, <gasps> not quite everything, but a heck of a lot of stuff did go into a skip. Some people actually what rescued stuff. Yeah, some people actually rescued stuff out of the skip. Not the costumes, as far as I'm aware. All of the costumes were saved. Although I can't even be certain on that because, as we understand it, the sand miner model from uh, the robots of death that appears to have ended up in a skip um, out, out, coming out of one of the two exhibitions um, unless it was rescued by certain it's in it's in sort of private hands now and nobody knows about it I don't know but the rumor is that the sand miner model ended up in a skip coming out of one of the exhibitions so a, a heck of a lot of stuff went into I um, did go back skip. myself as well uh, once in the late 80s and a couple of times afterwards, but at the time in the late 80s, I went looking for it and couldn't find it because it had been, again, another five or six years. And I was convinced that it was still there because they wouldn't remove that, would they? Because Doctor Who, in my eyes, yes. Doctor Who was still, was still the biggest thing ever. So it would definitely yeah. still be there. And I just I just wasn't successful. I just hadn't found it. I'll, I'll try harder mm. next time. So mm. I think it had gone into the 90s, maybe until I joined the Hunatics, come to think of it, Simon, and became part of organised fandom and met other Doctor Who fans. I think that was become when I became aware that the exhibition didn't exist anymore. I knew there was, because I knew there was still one in Longleat. Yes. And to me, that and was you just part. assumed there was one in Blackpool. Well, uh, yeah, because to me, Why wouldn't the, the one in Blackpool was was the the desired destination. Who'd want to go to this dusty old stately home in the middle of nowhere? You go to Blackpool. It's the Las Vegas of the north, yeah. for heaven's sake. You know, it was a very exciting place to go to, always packed full of people. Why would they keep the Longleat one and close the Blackpool one? But, of course, it turns out that's exactly what they did do. I, yeah. it, it, it was one of those things I didn't want to accept, just like the series yeah. coming off in 89, Will. It was, no, none of this is yeah, happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was, um, I, I think it will be in that that online book, uh, Blackpool Remembered. Is it? Yes. Alex, Alex Storer mm -hmm. and uh, John Collier. John Collier. Yeah. There's, I think it's in there. There's, a, there's an account by someone who lived in Blackpool, and he used to used to go there a lot because it's John right himself, there in his, think, his town. And he he said he says he, he walked around the corner and and saw people, you know, workmen bringing stuff yeah. out. And he, he went down, he went down without, you know, there's no one to pay. So he just went in for free and had a walk around it while the workmen were in, thinking that they were changing the exhibits to set it up for, mm. for 1986. And he, and he asked one of the workmen, uh, you know, what are you doing? And he says, the workmen just went, let's go in, mate, let's go in, it's finished. And he, he went home and it is, he says that his mother knew there was something wrong when he came mm -hmm. in. Because it was like grey, you know, the, yeah. the stock of it that it was it was going. Like you just seen the cat um, run, got run over or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She said she knew there was something seriously wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, because of his face, he was absolutely gutted that it was. I and believe that's so one unceremoniously of... as well. Just, just yes. going, just thing. literally skipped, as I say, yeah. skipped. I believe that's one of John Collier's own stories, and obviously John is the the collator, isn't he? Of yeah. uh, all three. Yeah. Of these previous Ooh. books, collated and edited I by John them. Collier, with uh, Alex Storer as well, worked on these, of course, didn't he? All the design and all the beautiful artwork, put it all together with an absolute army. They they call it the Exhibition Army, don't they, Simon? So yeah. they produced Blackpool Remembered, Blackpool Revisited, and then last year, a Blackpool Remembered special in memory of Stuart Glazebrook. All three of these titles available as ebooks that hundreds of thousands of downloads of these things hugely popular exhaustive 
in information. They've left no no stone or or croton or quark unturned have they? <laughs> in the in the research for these things. Between them all, hundreds of people have contributed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Alex, uh, Alex Story, who did uh, the design work, I think, on all of these, was in the uh, chat earlier. And I don't know whether he's still there, Alex, but uh, yeah, it, it, Alex worked on them as well, design wise. And they're, they're, they're just fantastic, fantastic books. Um, so many times people ask them to, to print, to have printed copies of them because they're so loved. But you couldn't simply because the amount of pages in them is incredible. They, these are real labors of love. There's a heck of a lot of stuff in there. They'd be Just, bigger than one of the old phone directories, wouldn't oh, they? Be thousands of pages. <laughs> they'd they'd yeah. be absolutely huge. But of course, they um, are all still available on their website, joined now by this fourth title, Blackpool 74, again, edited and collated by John Collier. This has just been released a few days ago, Simon. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, have you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> I've pored over it. It was yes, it was literally released on the 9th of April on the uh, on the anniversary, the 50th anniversary of the opening. He, John John released it with with actually a relatively little um, sort of fanfare. Really, it sort of crept up on people, um, uh, and it, so he's qu quietly been squirreling away on this in the background. And again, it's a fantastic book. It's 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 a it's a good read. There's lots in there. It, 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 it's what he's done really brilliantly is he's put Doctor Who in 1974 in context. He's put the world generally in context in 1974 mm. and Blackpool. So so you get a full feeling of of, of what it was like in, in 1974 in Blackpool and the world. Britain culturally Who. 50 years ago. Totally, totally. And some of the photos in there are fantastic. We flashed some of them up this evening, those those publicity photos of John and Liz uh surrounded by crowds but there's lots more in the book it's a brilliant brilliant book then he's also got some of the uh, some colorized photos in from um uh, clayton hickman yeah yeah so, so i'm assuming that this one on the front is is possibly a colorized photo uh but by clay that's possibly clayton's work there as well um and that photo just says it all doesn't it that just says everybody loved doctor who in 1974 because yeah. they did and look at the smile on john's face he's just in his absolute element here isn't he but it's a uh, it's a cracking book. I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, anybody that has got any interest in Blackpool uh, exhibition, and even it'll charge just like yourself who never got to go there. What John does so brilliantly with these books is you feel as though y y you could have been there. Literally walks really, you through. Yeah, he does a really clever job of just. It's not just dry text. You really feel as though you you've almost taken home a brochure. From 1974 of what it was like to be an exhibition so i recommend it to you as well Shah. even though you weren't there you'd love it you'd love it great photos so many photos of all the exhibits in there as well um so many photos uh, that, that far more than you would imagine of the 1974 exhibits um so so we're talking 50 years ago it's gold dust to find these photos and they're all in there so just well done john Highly recommended. Mm. We've awesome. recorded Shame several you think I can't episodes. see any of you and Dan. <laughs> Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we We've go. recorded several episodes of the podcast with John and Alex in the past. You can find those on the playlists here or at type40.podbean.com. I remember, well. Dan. I hope to drag them back for the next one. I remember, I remember I watched one of those, Dan. I remember you reminiscing about In the Little Shop, that television monitor that's facing the shop. Yeah. Where they yes. Play yeah. Either a message from the doctor... Uh, Tom Baker saying it's good, isn't it? Why don't you tell yeah, that's you right. Um, I remember, tell your friends. Yeah, tell your friends. I don't mind. Yeah, uh, and I remember the regeneration from Tom to Peter. Uh, that's and, right. And you you said that you were sort of stood there transfixed, watching it over and over that one scene. I did exactly the same because of course we had no no copies of it. So to see it being played a few months after it had aired on that screen. The regeneration from Tom to Peter, just over and not just standing there watching it for a good ten minutes, over and over. Yeah, <laughs> just fantastic. But somebody's asking in the uh, chat here: Is it a physical book? Sorry, Ezra Goldstein is asking: Is it a physical book? No, only an e-book. Because uh, I say that, that the page count in there would be cost prohibitive for them to print. So no, it's only an e-book. Um, the, the best way to find it, I don't know whether you're going to put um, a link in the uh, somewhere, Dan. 
but, I but... can do, but th- if you go and find the episodes of the podcast where we talk to John and Alex here on the Type 40 YouTube channel, you'll find all the links in the description there as well. They all they all still work. They all still stand for and all also, the titles, but I will update the, the link in the description here too. And failing that, if you if you literally just Google Blackpool Remembered, um, it will it will come up there. Um, it's up Black, right Blackpool Remembered 7485.wordpress. Dot com Blackpool remembered seven four eight five dot wordpress dot com so you can find them all on there and they're free for goodness sakes they're free this is the incredible thing about John he doesn't charge these things they're free I mean well done John you know we so take maybe, our hats off maybe for all the for all the shameless bathing in nostalgia we've been doing in the last forty minutes Sean maybe the present day isn't that bad after all it isn't all bad and uh, who knows in the future what may what may happen yes yeah, so it was 50 years of the blackpool docs who exhibition this is what russell t davis said when he was pressed on a possible return of the doctor who experience or something like it again he said that doctor who experience lost a lot of money that's not a secret it just did i loved it it was brilliant it was so lavish no wonder it lost money so it's kind of once bitten why shy he did go on to say if it starts to get the kids watching if it starts to sell the toys if it starts creating demand then it'll start to happen mm-hmm. right now it's a difficult time for that the early signs are great russell assures fair us enough mm. fair enough to just coming right out and saying it you don't get that all the time mm-hmm. um so i appreciate that rather than you know giving it load of waffle and not really knowing what yeah. on earth he's banging on about it's there uh, quite nice to be like look this is the situation this is we can't we physically can't do it i appreciate that over anything so fair. Yeah. Yeah. and the, and the thing that the reason i would love to see an exhibition back as well is to just ensure that so many of those costumes that are back out there and are brought back together again because if we're not careful they'll all just get sold off to private collectors in uh, in, in private uh, collections, and you'll never see them again. And what a shame that would be. That's why we need an exhibition again. And also, yeah, it's been fifty years, but yeah, you know, it's a bloody good idea. Yeah, <laughs> it's that simple. Why abandon it altogether? You know, yeah, the Roblox stuff's fantastic. You know, these virtual worlds, but people want to get out into into the real world. They want to reach out and touch. They want to smell the the carpet shampoo, Stephen. <laughs> 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 told off by the security guards for touching something that you shouldn't ooh uh and yeah you want to be uh, looking at, the, at your watch and thinking you know oh god you know when was it mum said i'd got a meter at mcdonald's have, yeah. have i really got to leave now you want the next generation of kids to sort of feel that somewhere along the line just just as malcolm holt says what you need for science fiction is a good idea it doesn't have to be your original idea <laughs> and, you know, a, a return to a doctor exhibition wouldn't necessarily be original but it would be a return to what's worked time and time and time again let us know what you think of it all in the live chat by all means more memories in the comments would be brilliant and go and hit up those fabulous ebooks too with our friends john and alex and the exhibition army and tell them tell them too that type 40 we're the ones that sent you there it's amazing that people are still finding out about these things after all this time but quite clearly they are simon absolutely they need to like and subscribe and then they'll get to know about it all the more <laughs> A uh, shout out to Ian David Diaz watching in the hey. live chat here. I know he's here because I've just seen him scuttling around. He's got a comment. He's got a comment there for Will. He says, "A loving Will's comfy chair." There's something tales <laughs> of the unexpected about it. I so beat you to it, Ian. <laughs> we said that. We it said that. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> oh, Big Brother Diary Room. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's screams Big Brother Diary. Type diary Room. There you go. As long as I'm not that like, oh. creepy bloke off That's Life, Shao won't know what I'm talking about. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, That's Life. Yeah. With Cyril know. Fletcher. Yeah, yes, Cyril, sir. yeah. Still. I don't want In fact, to Simon, you need that chair for Still when you do the diary. I do actually. It's a diary chair, isn't it? It is Get a diary that chair. fireplace going. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do need the fireplace going. That's where we need to start. I'm going to sort that. I'm Good. I'll hold you to it. I'll sell it down to you. Okay. <laughs> oh, fabulous! Uh, the BBC needs to wake up and bring it back. Bring it all back, yeah. says uh, Real Superdoc. Yeah. 
Quite right. Agree more. Yeah. And they've got the money. The TARDIS travel says the costumes and exhibits are sat in a warehouse yeah. somewhere and hopefully being looked after. Oh, hopefully oh, TARDIS travels. Hopefully. And TARDIS travels also says a small exhibition kids. today would be better. And I agree, a small exhibition mm. would be just perfect. It doesn't need to be huge. It doesn't need to be in a hangar. Just small is good. No, that, they must have just overestimated true. it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah, what, I'm not yeah. knocking it at all. It, it no, was an amazing it looks, place. It looks great. Yeah. But I think that was probably I, I, where I they went be, wrong. If I'm honest, I still want them to be very ambitious with it. But yeah, I yeah, sometimes less is more, isn't it? You can be ambitious uh, just in a smaller space. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, looking looking back to forty years ago, there. You know, we talked about Shooter Gatwell at the top of the show. Will you talked a little about Colin Baker and the Twin Dilemma? And you did get to meet Colin, didn't you, at the exhibition? That must have been it's in its really lighter days, right at the yeah. end. Yeah. So it would have yeah. been. Uh, 1984, so Caves of Andrazani had aired, Twin wow. Dilemma, and I'd, because uh, I didn't have a video recorder till the end of 84, so I'd play and record on the old audio cassette tape, I remember that. <laughs> and I, I recorded the four episodes of Twin Dilemma, and I'd played them so much, because I was so excited that there was a new Doctor, and he was a, an eccentric Doctor, which is, oh, I've grown to love Peter Davison's portrayal since. I, I missed... Doctor Who being eccentric. Uh, uh, so Tom went and the eccentricity went with him. So when Colin came, it, I felt it was back to how Doctor Who should be. So what had happened was he'd, after Twin Dilemma had aired um, in the March of that year, uh, in August, I think it was August 4th, Colin Baker in full costume at the Pleasure Beach was opening their new, I think it's called Space Invader. Yes, it was, uh, Space Mountain. Was it Space, Space Mountain? Mountain? Yeah. So he'd been there, and I was in the exhibition while he was down there opening that. And the lady in the shop was very busy uh, tidying things up and dusting, and in a bit of a panic, a bit of a flap, because she knew Colin Baker was down at the Pleasure Beach, and there was a good chance he would come up to the exhibition afterwards. Yeah. Uh, so when I heard that, and I'm stood there in the shop, uh, I I was thinking, oh goodness me, what if he did? Imagine if he did. And uh, I just <laughs> bought the um, the seven inch single uh, vinyl of the theme music with his face on it. Brilliant! And I'd already bought bought it with Tom Baker's face on it, <laughs> the same version, Peter Howell. That's and then the we all had one after that. And of course, now I had to have the single again with the exact same two pieces of music on it. What we call in Baker's face, and I just bought it, and then I heard my mother running down the exterior steps because those who've never been in the exhibition, you didn't go out the way you came in. The steps yeah. came up around the back of the building. That's right, and kind of threw you a bit when you came out. You felt that like you'd been transported somewhere by the TARDIS. So she came running in with this. I remember this navy blue. Uh, bathing suits, all covered in dry sands, because she'd been on the, <laughs> on the actual beach, um, and she was going, William, William, Doctor Who's here, Doctor Who's Brilliant. here. And the, just as she got into the shop, at the other end, in the darkness, in the console room, I heard a very recognisable voice say to the person escorting him, uh, well, about one of the exhibits, you wouldn't want to meet that on a dark night, would you? And, and I heard that voice, I thought, I know who that is. And then <laughs> he was just suddenly there in the doorway, full costume. Fantastic. I was, I was had all these things that I was going to say to Colin Baker if I ever met him, having obsessed over my tape recordings of The Twin Dilemma. And I was <laughs> dumb by it. I just, I just couldn't speak. And uh, my mother quickly snatched the record out of my hand and said, will you sign this for my life? <laughs> he wasn't stupid. She had her head screwed on. Brilliant. And, um, and he just went, certainly, has anybody got a pen? And the lady in the shop gave him the pen, and he signed it. Unfortunately, 40, 40 years later or whatever. Um, it's gone. He signed it in felt tip, so it's faded away. I still have the oh. same. But uh, I have met him since and got him to re-sign it. Brilliant. Uh, did, you tell, a, did you tell him real... the story? Did you tell him the story as well, Will? Yeah, yeah, he, he knows that. Yeah, obviously he doesn't remember it. 
no, no. And, and it's not it's not that famous event that everybody knows about with the children in need and all because that was uh, a year later. Yeah. So there's no footage of me meeting him or any photographs, sadly, uh, because it was so spontaneous. Oh, no. But it really it, it I've just spent the rest of the day thinking about Colin Baker and re really rest is. of the week, probably. And my mother, my mother, I remember being very taken with the, the quality of the material that his costume was made, of. <laughs> and discussing it with my grandma when we got back. That it's not cheap, that you know, it's not cheap. That's, <laughs> cheap. That's I can what we get. the cloth. <laughs> so a treasured memory, fabulous. yeah, brilliant, fabulous brilliant. story. And if you've got some memories of the exhibition and meeting any of the doctors, we are lucky enough to meet John Pertwee, Tom Baker. Peter Davison or Colin Baker, not just at Blackpool, but at Longleat, maybe or anywhere else, let us know in the comments section too. Thanks again for that, Will. What a fabulous story. Mm -hmm. I'm a massive Colin Baker fan as well, but uh, yeah, I think I'd have been exactly the same. Exactly yeah. the same. I'm Leela of the 17, and you should watch Titan. <laughs> I, I can't believe you cut me off. I was just saying how much I liked Will's mum, and you were like, "No, nah. she's a like, she's just opened her mouth. I better put a video on." <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, it's that moment, Shaw, where we round things off with the last look at the view screen. It's a regular eye up your temporal schism in search of yep. the prettiest pictures from out there Aww. in the universe. So this My is fan bit. art, <laughs> fan art, and crafts and cosplay and everything else if they can create it we want to have a butchers that's the general rule of thumb here on the view screen if you're a fan artist a cosplayer or a crafter we'd like to get your work up on the screen so we can all have a good look and uh, publicize it too so let us know if, if we can find you on an instagram account a website or a deviant art page or anywhere maybe you've got your own website we'd love to have a look so get in touch with us here at type 40. first of all how about this one? Because uh, over the weekend, there was a couple of birthdays in the TARDIS. First of all, this gentleman uh, celebrated his 66th birthday. It's the 12th Doctor, Peter Capaldi. Ooh. This one. Oh, wow. Beautiful, beautiful picture here. And it's unmistakably him, even though you can only see half of his face. It's from Jay mm. Basenfeld. Over you just need the eyebrows, X. in all fairness. Yeah, you, you do. Don't, you don't, you don't need anything else. That's, <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? Fish. Fantastic, that very moody, just perfect for that That's for, him, for isn't multi doctor. Yeah, and the, stars and the yeah, the design on the coat there, the stars and the mm. the, the background, yeah, love it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, oddly, that sort of design wouldn't sort of suit any other doctor other than Capaldi somehow. It's just brilliant. Mm. I like the fact it's the the, the stars. I mean, there's the simplicity of it, yeah. But it's the it's like the kind of uh, the the jumper he used to wear with all the splats on it and all the streaks. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when Capaldi does his own little illustrations too, he often puts uh, stars and streaks and splats and streaks and all sorts of things on it. So I think Capaldi himself would really like that. But I do. It's the eyes. I think if they hadn't got the eyes, yeah, then it, then it wouldn't mm. it wouldn't work. It's so unmistakably him and so beautifully mm -hmm. judged. No, I just really like this one. I think Capaldi himself would like it too. And of course, happy 66th birthday to Peter Capaldi, as Ezra Goldstein says there. Ace illustration, my favourite doctor from New Who, says Tony L. You're not alone in I that, Tony, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Does Peter Capaldi shop at Primark? I, well, it looks like it, Tony. Looks like it. <laughs> You've seen total <laughs> evidence, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you need, buddy? What else do you need? And uh, yeah, there was also another another birthday for another Peter. Uh, Peter Davison turned seventy three too wow. over the over the weekend as well. So uh, my doctor, this was the fifth doctor, and we've got this uh, this portrait here, a mixture of digital and traditional, I believe, there from the Thin King, part of a series that he's put together. But this one looks like it was around the early to mid nineties. What do you think, Will? When do you think this was from? Hmm. I can't tell really. I do like it. I would, I would say it's early, early sort of nineties that you can get. He's got his kind of a Miami Vice sort of jacket on <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> that he used to wear in those days in sort of late eighties, early nineties. Peter Davison, seventy-three. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it looks like one of those, um, you know, like those cards you used to get when you were younger, and they'd have like almost. And they, they look like a drawing. That's yeah. kind of what all I could... 
I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but you know, if you don't yes. get, no, you <laughs> yeah, those little cards. That's shops, exactly, yeah. yeah, exactly what it looks like. And the light, I mean, the likeness is brilliant on that. And Peter Davison is notoriously difficult to get correct likeness on. Um, bless him, even, yeah, even Chris Achilleos couldn't do it. Bless him. Uh, it, uh, it's not, he's, he's just one of those faces, apparently. And not being an artist, I don't know, but I'm told that he's just not very easy to capture. Um, so yeah, that's just fantastic. I mean, that is Peter Davison, isn't it? Sort of circa 1990. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I, that. I like that one. So both Peters celebrating a birthday over the weekend. Of course, much of our conversation over the last hour or so has revolved around, around the monsters, really, experiences of monsters. And, uh, you know, I love a Doctor Who monster. Uh, some monsters more than others. But I, I love none more than uh, than these. And... Uh, the <laughs> they're mandrels. mandrels. Hey, I thought there might be somehow. How did you know? <laughs> As celebrated in this fabulous piece from Daryl Joyce. Now, I've oh. never seen this before. Oh, wicked. It's, it's a canine doing battle with not one, but two Brilliant. menacing mandrels. So slightly reimagined there by yeah. Daryl in his signature style, Will. I, I love Daryl's work. I love right. the mandrels and I love canine. What's not to love? I love the fact that they look like living beings as well and yes. not, not people in yes. costume. They look like they what? are alive. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Oh, he just crushed Dan. <laughs> yeah, they were never, they were uh, yeah I mean, basically, they look exactly how the mandrels should have looked. It's as yeah. simple as that. <laughs> you know, they do. They all, it's funny. They almost look like sort of Scooby Doo monsters. It almost reminds me of Scooby Doo. That does in a good way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't see what you mean. Yeah. You know, that's how, that's how the mandrels that would that look man. in Scooby Doo, isn't it? Let's be honest. And eyebrows that could rival Peter Capaldi's. Yeah. Yeah. And the canine's just beautiful. I just love that rendition of canine. It's just beautiful. I love how just because he's so small compared as well. Yes. Uh, that's what I actually really yeah. like about it. Just just does yeah. not give him monkeys, does he? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, also, the way that, that, that Daryl has done uh, K9's nose laser as well. Yes. How, yeah. You know, how the, the beam travels at that weird angle, which we all kind of spent years cringing at, but now absolutely love, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, it does. How, it's, how it seems to pierce the mandrel mm -hmm. and sort of go deep inside it and, and light it up a little bit. Yeah, I love the way it lights up arms and legs. As if it's about to burst or something. It's yeah. his friend at the back who's like, oh, forget that. I'm not dealing with that. Yeah, I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, You're on your own. Yeah. That's very true, yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that they are giant. They're, they're huge. Um, yeah. Monsters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just it basically yeah. looks how how Nightmare of Eden should have looked with a, with a budget, with a, with a proper with a proper budget. It's as simple as that. K9 yeah. is a brave dog, says Tony L. Excellent, <laughs> says Ezra Goldstein. Couldn't couldn't agree more. Yeah. K9 doesn't like smugglers. Oh, says yeah, the real very super true. doctor. Yeah. yeah, very true. L looks like the Magnum PI episode, says Mark Milford. Oh, he's talking about the Peter Davison. Yeah, I think that's back to Peter <laughs> Davison. Yeah. What? Oh, <laughs> never saw that in Magnum PI. Unless he is on well, if there were mandrels in, in Magnum P.I., I certainly would have watched a lot more episodes. <laughs> of so. Yeah, we'd have had more viewers, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, this this would be a... Uh, yeah, we wouldn't be doing this show. I'd be doing one about, about Magnum instead, I suspect. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mandrel mandrels' P. arms... Mandrel <laughs> mandrels' arms look more flexible and yeah. longer as yeah, well. As they were supposed to. Travels. Yeah. Oh, was that yeah. right? Yeah, well, that was the idea. That yeah, that was the idea that, that that they would have big, long, flexible arms, but they just they just didn't work, obviously. <sighs> yeah, what dwarfing canine. Canine would have to move pretty quickly to get in between those those two cumbersome legs yeah. there and, and evade the the footfall of a mandrel. But I think my odds are my money is still on the the tin dog rather than the mandrels. I hate, I hate to say it. I think he's going to make short work of them. Uh, brilliant work, as always, though, from Daryl Joyce, one of our favourite sure. artists here at Type 40 Live. Fantastic piece after fantastic piece. And he's not in the live chat now, but I know he was earlier. He was, he he was, was earlier on. And we're still... We, and Daryl, if you're watching this back on Catch we are still going to get you on to do a full interview. We've just got to get the date sorted out for that. But he's coming on. Daryl is coming on. 
It's coming on. It's coming on. So, yeah, lock the doors. Lock the doors. Keep them in. Keep them in. <laughs> As always, if you're an artist, traditional or digital, and you'd like us to showcase your your works here up on the screen, get in touch or if you've got a favorite artist you feel could be passing us by and you you think we'd enjoy their work then please let us know where we can find them or send us their work or let us know in the comments section too what a show for everybody a, a real blast up and down the vortex Shah, do you do you feel back in the swing now I do now. Lenny's joined us. No, I am. He's come to he's come to say good night to everybody. He's been Lenny fast. Mate, been you fast do not know what has come in your way. <laughs> yeah, been next time we see you, that beep. Um, yeah, it's been lovely to come back. I know it's been a bit of a mad one. Um, it genuinely still has. I'm actually in the process of moving house. If anyone's interested, um, and I am going to be. If you don't mind a little plug, if that's okay. Um, I'll do anyway. <laughs> no, I'm going to be doing a panel, um, cheating on type 40 actually, sorry about that, at MCM at the what? end of May. I know, I know, terrible. <laughs> um, at least I told you, you know, but at the end of May, I'll be at MCM with um, an awful lot of running podcasts who are hosting the community, Doctor Who Community Show, don't, which will be at... Um, <laughs> which will be so, at MCM London. So end of May, if you are going, I'll be there. Come and say hello. Um, and then you can get me see so basically do what I do here, but just with a microphone instead. So that is their choice. I did not demand it. But are we there as well, Dan? Oh, no, we're not. So I said you they... could come and you said you were busy. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll let you go. Out, me, love. Uh, hey, up. And I scrap, it those... scrap at the end of the show. <laughs> Can people do? Do people have to pre-book for this? Do we know, Shaw, or can they potentially go on the day and get in just fine? What, what, you what you can about? potentially go on the day. Um, to be honest, it's um, it, it really is just if you get there and there's nothing left, then there isn't. Um, but I've is been it? able to go before, but that's not shading anyone. Um, and been able to get in. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's some great stuff. Even if you're not, you know, specifically there for Doctor Who, there's all sorts of bits there. And it is just a good little geek fest. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely come along if you are uh, if you're thinking about it and you've got nothing else to do in London. That's terrible plugging. Oh, this is why I don't <laughs> work for it. <laughs> oh, if... you're just uh, cheap. I'm, so, I'm really glad <laughs> that you put this shot. out. I'm so glad this isn't live. It's um. Yeah, yeah. It's really <laughs> <laughs> be fine. Best, best of luck. Uh, May the May the twenty fifth is it? Yes. You don't That's even fine. know. You don't even know. It's a crap there, everybody. <laughs> we're, we're, we're pretty sure she'll be I'm, there. I'm just there so, for the last. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Will uh, yeah, we've got a uh, Doctor Who dark contract out in the middle of July. I hope to speak to you before then, though. See, middle of you July. Go. You don't know the day either, love. <laughs> uh, to Amazon, no one tells me anything. I'm calling to Amazon, no. <laughs> it's in the July. Yeah, uh, and I might even get one a little bit before then. You never know. Just in time for Hooverville. Same yeah, there. I'll be there. Same I'll be at yeah, Hooverville in Derby. I will. Yeah, in August. Yeah, just before Hooverville. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So Absolutely. if you want to meet me and get a signed CD, I'll be there. There you go. See that? That's how you do a plug, guys. I was just doing the test yeah. run. <laughs> Some time in August, I'll be there. I think. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant stuff, uh, Simon. Uh, thanks, thanks for this. Thanks Thank for you. Yeah, me. I won't be at any of these. I'll, I'll be at Waitrose. I'll be anybody who wants to see me. I'll be at Waitrose. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not around this Thursday, are you? For when no, no, I'm not. Around, I'm not around this Thursday, but I'll be well next week. But 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 I, there's there's two birthdays actually in the room. Um, uh, oh. Dan. Well, Dan, I know yours is imminent, and mine is imminent birthdays. as well. Don't you know. two have kept that so quiet. <laughs> There's a couple of birthdays in the room in the next seven days. That's all I'm saying. Next seven days? Oh, you buggers. Right, okay. I'll, um, I'll get on my card <laughs> sending. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what, what, can I, what can I say to all of that? Yeah, get you can get in touch with us through our, through our social medias, Instagram <laughs> and X at Type Forty Doctor Who. Or if you can't stand the wait until the next live stream, it's just a few days away. You can find us all in the Type Forty Facebook group there, along with uh, well, yeah, other Time Lords. Really, not necessarily these Time Lords, although they might be, but they might not. You've got to join the Type Forty Facebook group, and you'll find out who's a member. And who isn't? But I know what I can promise you. Uh, tarts. 
This kind of tarts are absolutely essential because there's so much going on on the wall there in the Type 40 Facebook group. You'll want to just sit there and scroll and comment for hours and hours and hours. Uh, join us again on Thursday, same time and spaces for, for more Type 40 Live, more hot takes, cold shoulders, pet peeves, bouquets or pot shots. Who knows what it'll all be about. Well, I've got a, got a general idea. I know who's going to be here. That's for certain. So there's going to be plenty of argy-bargy, the Type 40 live way. So don't miss that across Rumble, YouTube, and Facebook, of course, at the usual time, 8 p.m. UK. Again, fabulous comments in the live chat. Thank you so much for all of that, and keep them coming. That's what we want, more of this. And we'll we'll all interact and, and have some more fun until the next show. Of course we will. Thanks again to the panel, to Will, to Shah, and to Simon, to everybody watching and commenting along. Whew, we always have the time if you have the space here at Type 40 Live. We're, we're off to, uh, to you know, just run around the TARDIS for a little while for just the next couple of days. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll see you in a few days back on Thursday. Yes, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.